Meaty hands. That's it again. That's the second time. Hi, I'm Sydney. Welcome to the Forbidden Cities, a Keeper of the Lost Cities podcast where JC and I talk about Keeper of the Lost Cities books, theories, characters, ships, and more. Hello. Hi, guys. Um, it's We just found out it's episode 17. Yeah. Which is kind of amazing. I did not realize that I was that we were that many in. That's pretty. Wow. And I I have have to, I'm the one who has to write, like, the number. Mm-hmm. So, um, we're going to be doing a new sort of episode schedule going forward. It's probably going to start being every other Saturday, uh, just because it's going to be busy this summer. It's been busy the school year. And recording a weekly podcast that are, like, in our episodes are, like, mm-hmm. two hours long or an hour long. That is a lot of work, so yeah. we're going to start doing every other week. Which I mean, you should probably be used to this already since we skip we've kind one of, accident. <laughs> we've kind every, of been doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's going to be a thing now, um, and it will kind of be good for for you, people who listen because we'll actually have good material and we won't be, like, <laughs> stressing last minute um, and, and trying to make up something whenever we get to the recording place, so... Yeah. And um, this week, we're going to start, try to start back where we left off last week. But Which it's for been, us was, what, like a month ago? Yeah, it's been a while. So if we repeat things, I'm so sorry. If I'm confused, I'm sorry. We will uh, do our best. Yeah, we haven't even started Everglades yet, or barely started. I mean, I've read it a lot, so I could probably, mm-hmm. <laughs> I could probably just fake my way through it, but we don't have to record that today, so. Yep. It'll be, it'll be fun. Yeah, so. I'm so excited for Everblaze, though. Oh, I haven't read, this is going to be the last one before we get to the ones that I've read a lot, so. It's going to be fun. Anyway. I'm going to love it when we get to Never Seen. I love yes. Never Seen, in case you didn't know, that's my favorite. Anyway, <laughs> Everblaze is, is, is that your favorite or Lone Star? <sighs> So, Legacy is my favorite. Oh, it is now? Yeah, well, I had said, so for a while, uh, ex- sorry, Everblaze was my favorite, and that was whenever only the first five were out. And then I reread five, Lodestar, and I was like, no, that's my favorite. Hmm. So, five and three are my favorite until Legacy came out. Mm-hmm. So, now it's reordered again and unlocked is somewhere in there. I haven't had enough time to decide yet, but yeah, ex- Everblaze is like at least my top four, so. Yeah. I, I like it a lot. Even yes. yeah. I guess I just thought it was your favorite because I you talk, talk about, about it a lot. It the most, yeah. <laughs> it's important. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can't really spoil. This is still a spoiler free episode. This is spoiler free part two. Mm. Um so I we will we, oh, we no. will keep spoilers out. <laughs> we will do our best to keep spoilers out. Um so we were in chapter th- we're about to start chapter thirty three when we left off last time. That's fifty percent of the way through. Uh, according to the Kindle version, so that's also like page 290, basically. So my first note is on 292. Do you have one before that? Nope. Okay, actually, I think it's 291. Oh, I have 294. So cool. So 291. It's just um, whenever Della had first kind of heard about what was wrong with Alden. Like, I heard that, I think his mind could be broken, but it said, she turned toward the curved windows that were draped in silky white curtains, and her figure slowly faded until she was completely invisible. Sophie had seen her vanish many times, but this time it looked more like the sunlight swallowed her, like Della was too weak to fight against it, and she could hear whispers of sobs coming from where Della oh. hid. And I was like, that's just like the most beautiful, yeah. sad writing. Like, <sighs> there's just so many little oh. writing devices I see in this, and. I didn't Shannon's even notice just that. That's so, so pretty. beautiful. I, I love her writing. Oh. Um, my next one isn't until 294. Okay, I have one here too. We might have the same. Oh, do you? Oh, wait, maybe. Is it? Okay. So I had a note, the one I mentioned on two, 294, but that should go in the spoiler one. Okay. We're great at this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to go through these and label them as spoiler or non spoiler. Okay, go ahead. Okay, on. 294, um, Fitz is talking to Sophie, and he's like, um, please tell me you weren't Alden's guide, and or his guide, because Alden's his dad, mm-hmm. <laughs> and Sophie was like, I tried to talk him out of it, but he said it had to be me. Fitz shook his head. It always has to be you. <sighs> what does that mean? Nothing. <sighs> That's just... The passive pa- aggressiveness. Passive aggressiveness drives me crazy, and I was Nothing. just like, oh my goodness, just immaturity like, in general. I what it is. <laughs> I would be. I, I wouldn't have let him get away with that because I would have. I, I can tell what passive aggressive things mean, and I would have been like, "It does not mean nothing." Yeah. I would have taken that conversation in a whole different direction. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, and the next one I have is on the next page where um, it's, it's sort of a random little thing, but it's just kind of looking into Sophie's thought process. She's saying, like, it's not her fault. She said the words which, with as much conviction as she could, but part of her was secretly wondering if they were true. And I was like, I, I, li- I like, feel that. Um, like, the little, I don't know, wondering if it could be your fault. Like, mm. I, I could say one thing and think a different thing. Hmm. Super random stuff. Um, and then, ooh, my next one is 297, and you might have the same thing. Nope. Go ahead. Oh. Um, I think they're talking about checking to see if Alden's problem is that his mind is broken. So that means Della had faded earlier just because she was sad about him being hurt. She hadn't actually heard that his mind is broken uh-huh. yet. And Alvar's like, no, I think Sophie should do it. And Fitz goes, she's done enough. The fury in Fitz's voice knocked Sophie back a step, but Alvar pulled her forward with him. Seriously, Alvar grabbed Fitz's mm. shoulders and yanked him back. I know you want to help, but Sophie's mind is stronger than yours. Fitz shoved him away. Please, she's just a kid. <gasps> Sophie stared at the gun, hoping no one could see the tears that slipped out before she could fight them back. Okay, let me add, interject here. Uh, Fitzy, you a kid too, child? Uh-huh. You what, like 16? Is he even 16? No, he's like 14. He's, he's, he's you were a child, 15. Fitz. 15. He is, he is, he is still young. Yeah. Um, nope, he's he's 15, if not 14. Yeah, he's, and so this is kind of the thing that I didn't forgive Fitz for for the whole series. Now, if you did, you're probably a better person than I am. But I let it go. I, I have I have held that, and uh, yeah. Oh, it's the door slam. It's a door slam. What? I oh, you you door slammed. Yeah, yeah, that's that explains. It. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, 301 is my next one. Okay, I have 299, and I got to figure out what I was trying to say. Oh, I think it's when they figured out that Alden, um, Alden's mind had broken for sure. And I just wrote down, I thought we already knew that. Did we? I think they knew that it was, because there was, a, they, they made a difference between broken and lost. Hmm. And so they knew that he had gotten lost in Fenton's mind and come back. And Fitz was mad because he thought that some part of Alden's sanity was still, like, left behind. Uh-huh. Whenever he got lost. But lost and broken are different lost it's easy any telepath can call you out of a mind when you're lost you just have to be strong enough to fight back oh. broken only sophie can hmm. heal okay you're probably right see the problem is i did these so long ago i don't even remember what i was trying to get at. <laughs> um do you have any more before 301 um no go ahead um let me see mm I was like, just poor Elwyn in, in these chapters. I know. Because um, they're like, oh, no, I don't know. I don't know if something's wrong with his mind. Um, Maybe I should check. And, like, everyone's just kind of volunteering. And Elwyn's like, no, no, no one is going to try anything else. I don't need any more bodies piling up. Aww. And I just, I'm like, he's got to be so exhausted mm-hmm. and just, like, stressed out. Like, how often in the Lost Cities does stuff like this happen? Yeah. Never. He's not used to, like, having people... The Shatter world is and falling pass apart, out basically. And, right. He, mm. poor Alwyn, just in that moment, yeah. he's got to be like, what's going on? Uh-huh. And mm. then Fitz does the, you've done enough, again. That's what I have. I have right here, he says that twice. Yeah. Why does he say you've done enough so Because you've done enough. <laughs> he thinks it's a good comeback. Usually, children that age, if they think they have a good comeback, <laughs> children that they age. don't. You mean two years younger. <laughs> 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 Me two years ago. If I was like, yeah, this is a good comeback, I, I would keep it and not let it go for a long time. You've yeah. done enough. <laughs> I'm going to start using that in our memes instead of just... Yes. But with cockneys. <laughs> and, and the chandelier You've done joke. enough. Sorry. The Fitz jokes, it's like chandelier. Chandelier. Oh. We can't really bring them up that much. Uh, I mean, they're vague enough that it doesn't matter, but... Uh, violence. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And loyalty, very loyal. And what was the? It was um, because the first one was like, I don't know what you're getting at. No, the five key aspects of it's. Oh, yeah. Wasn't okay. like loyalty mm-hmm. one of them? Or okay. C- caring. Caring. Mm-hmm. Caring. That's it. Okay. Yes. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, if you're a new listener, sorry for that. Or a new <laughs> reader. A new reader, you're gonna be really confused, but I promise that It'll wasn't click an actual someday. spoiler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Ellen sighed. What did I say? Oh, Ellen sighed. Like, he's like, Fitz, I know you're in shock, but don't say anything you're going to regret. And Fitz goes, I won't regret them. 
<laughs> and I was like, I'm just, I'm just citing this as evidence for in the end, his apology. Uh, it's not, is it, is it illegitimate because he said that he doesn't regret it? Hmm. Pre- preemptively? I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Could I win a case? Probably not. Probably not, but it is interesting. <laughs> Hmm. Did I win it in my brain? Yes, I did. (laughs) T.I. Right? Um, So my next one is, I have page 303, and I just put, I'm confused by the button. I have no idea what I was trying to say. Wait, what page? 303. Okay, I'm on 303. Button? Is that when he's patting her back? (laughs) What? Tyrion's awkwardly patting Sophie's back. I don't see a... He's so... Oh! Oh, Okay. Um. Oh. Oh, so she's there's going a hidden into Everglen, and there's a hidden button. What's to open there? Everglen? And I'm like, where did she learn about the button? It's inside of the the gates, though. So she's inside the property and pressing oh. it to let Tyrion in. Oh. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Thank and then you. I was like, button? What? <laughs> if I don't anyone know. Anyone could just this walk was out probably and press about the, the time when I was at your house, just like s- speed reading. Oh, true, mm-hmm. true, yeah. Um, and then this is sus, and I can bring this up because you know that it, by this book, Sophie's kind of like, oh, yeah, Prentice was my dad. Prentice is not my dad. Who could be my dad? It's not Prentice. Mm-hmm. I would just like to put forward Tyrion as a suspicious person. <laughs> Tyrion, she ran to his side and threw her arms around him. He tensed in her embrace, but she needed something to hold on to. Thank you for coming. Of course. Tyrion patted her back awkwardly. Mm-hmm. He just seems like he's trying so hard, and he's like, how to feelings. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then... Wait, do we type here again as INTJ? Uh, I don't know. I know Bronze is INTJ. Okay. Tergen... Hmm. I don't know if he ever did. I wonder if he's I don't INTP. Think he's a little awkward for it, yeah. He's yeah. not... Because INTJ is like, yeah, I'm sure. But this isn't my respect. No, because we said he follows in I. Anyway, we'll figure um, out. And the next... Oh, yeah, I said in, in the last episode that I was going to call out every single time that I said Alden paled. <laughs> Here we are again, page, no. um, page 303. More color had drained away from Alden's skin, turning him pale, lifeless. Yeah. This means something that we will discuss in our spoiler episode. Yep, and this is just yep. my introduction. Oh, I don't have more for a long time. Apparently, let's see, 1,217 people have highlighted this in the Kindle version. Oh, wow. Uh, Which one? Wait, 1,000? 1, 1,217 have highlighted. Oh, my gracious. Um, right after Sophie gets the, the happy elixir, and it says, She kicked the carpet, scattering flower petals everywhere. Part of her wanted to kick something harder, louder, something that would break into pieces. The other part of her wanted to giggle and roll in the silky flowers. Why did so many people highlight that? I have no of idea. Of all of the things to highlight. And, like, that first little key foster moment that we talked about in the last episode, yeah. that didn't have the underline highlight thing. How? This is the first one that I've noticed. It's, it's um, rigged. <laughs> it's totally rigged. <laughs> Amazon's just like, and this is the one we're highlighting. Yeah. They just scroll through, tap their finger down, yes. That's so weird. Um, for some reason, I know my next, uh, sorry, my next one is on page 309. Mine's on 308. Why don't I have a page? I'm so it? confused. I put Elwin, you dummy. <laughs> what? I think I'm talking about how um, they say it was guilt. Talking about Alden breaking. breaking. Guilt. Tear <laughs> repeated. Elwin goes, yeah, Elwin goes, but what could Alden possibly be guilt in a... I cannot talk today. Ugh. Okay, but what you could Alden possibly be guilty of? Elwin asked. Tear knew, even before Sophie said the name, Prentice. Elwin. Wait, why? I don't know, buddy. Okay. What could he? Hmm. And then he clearly knows. He says, that's crazy, Elwin argued. The council ordered that break, not him. You, you, in the last episode, sorry. I, I, yeah. I, I like, trail off for a second because I was reading the words. And then I was like, oh, wait, wait, okay, we're, oh. In the last episode, you said the same thing, like, why can't I talk to him? Yeah. So this is a new theme, everybody. Like, yeah, I've said it like three times today already. <laughs> off cam, off microphone, off mic. I don't know. <laughs> off camera. Um, it's because Tracy keeps me up late. Yeah, I I I kept her up very late. So uh, just a note: um, th- this is going to be another important thing in our next episode. But uh, uh, the guilt, guilt. Yeah, that's my whole thing. 
Yeah. Okay. Guilt and pale. Those are my two highlights so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and In then, other words, if you're a new listener or a new reader and you're reading through the books, look for guilt and paleness and you'll probably catch JC's drift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, the I think probably the reason Alwyn's like, no, this is crazy. This, why should he be guilty? I think he's this kind of Alwyn's in there as pure. a... Well, he's in there as a character to explain to the kids yeah, reading this why, why Alden would be guilty. Because uh-huh. the target audience is 8 to 12-year-olds, and not, not a lot of 8-year-olds would be like, oh, yes, I can see the cause of Alden's yep. guilt would be that he blames himself for the event that happened to you exactly. before. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as I read it. But still, Alwyn, Alwyn. <laughs> but I guess he's the most clueless character in that scene. Yeah. Except for Sophie, and Sophie would put that together on her own. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Writing devices. Ooh, okay, Tyrion being sus again. Is this 312? It's 310. Oh, um, not 312. Don't you dare, Tyrion shouted, grabbing Sophie's arms and holding her up. This is not your fault. It was his guilt that did this, and it would have caught up with him eventually. You can't run from the truth. Because she's saying that she could have helped if she paid closer attention. Maybe he wouldn't be... And she's arguing, but maybe he... Don't. Do not let the guilt cloud your mind. I mean it, Sophie. Not unless you want to end up like him. The fear in his eyes is enough to clear her head. Oh. He's very protective. He is protective. Good girl. My next one is... Mm -hmm. um, She rallied her strength and yanked her mind free, collapsing backward into someone's arms. That was hands down the most foolish thing you've ever done, Tyrion shouted. Sophie was surprised to realize he was... Realize he was the one hugging her. What were you thinking? I'm sorry. Her words were muffled by the fabric of his tunic. I had to make sure I couldn't help him. If there was any chance I could, Tyrion sighed and let her go, and she was immediately grabbed by Owen. Yeah, so, um, that's sus. I have on, like, if, right- If you were watching a movie, sorry. No, you're good. If you were watching a, this as a movie, and she turned around and hugged this character, you'd be like, hmm. hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, um... Where I said the fear in his eyes is enough to clear her head. I didn't notice this a second ago, but it continues. And then this is another highlight Mm -hmm. where 1,321 people have highlighted this part of the book. Uh, Good girl, Tyrion said, releasing her. If any thoughts like that start to show up, you must shove them away immediately. Do you hear me? Guilt is a treacherous thing. It creeps in slowly, breaking you down bit by bit. And um, keep in mind the the creeps and slowly breaking you down bit by bit part of that. But that's the highlighted part. Hmm. Um, I'd wager Alden's been on the verge of a break since he learned the Black Swan were on our side. And then Elwyn, who, who just there, he just chimes in for playing the blame game. It's just as much my fault. I should have noticed what was happening and stopped this. And I was just like, Elwyn, why are you here? <laughs> And Tyrion's obviously the like that he's your dad, but I don't think so. Well, and, and then Tyrion's like, yeah, and it's mental breaks aren't physical things. Alan, you couldn't have done anything. The only person whose fault it is, it's Alden's fault, because mm-hmm. Tyrion doesn't like Alden. Oh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, I highlighted the thing you just said, and I said hugging. Um. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then um, it's like it, but as soon as Tyrion, it says Tyrion sighed and let her go, and she was immediately grabbed by Elwyn. He spun her around and flashed a blue orb around her face. And so like, <laughs> if, if you, Elwyn's just there ruining the moment. Right, Elwyn. First of all, what are you doing here? He's helping. <laughs> He's a doctor. He's just so random. But if you still have, He's so sweet. If you if you're like me and you refuse to let go of theories that are clearly wrong, which I can respect that, even though I don't agree with your Elwin theory. If you if you are stubbornly sticking to the Elwin theory, um, I can respect you for that. And there's your evidence mm-hmm. that he snatched her from Tyrion, basically. <laughs> oh, I just realized she it didn't, be. or he didn't hug her though. He flashed a blue orb around her face. So, yeah. Yep. Okay, um, my next one is on 317. Um, my next one is 313, I think. Okay. Oh, it's just, uh, they emphasize the difference between lost and broken again. Oh. And she, and it said if she had to hear that one more time, she was going to lose it. <laughs> it's like. Well, apparently I, I needed to hear it one more time in the books <laughs> because I totally forgot what being lost was. Well, that's you've I guess read. it's when you get pulled down on someone's head. Yeah, it's yeah. whenever like their mind is broken, and so the shattered the shattered pieces like pull uh-huh. you down. It's whenever Sophie went in Prentice's mind and kind of yeah. got lost in it. That's mm-hmm. lost. Um, in Fenton's, kind of. Alden no. got lost. In oh Fenton. yeah, she was pulled out. Um, gotcha. But like you forget who you are versus broken, where you remember who you are and feel guilty. So then, how was or Alden being broken connected to 
breaking Fenton. No. Yeah. It's because he saw Prentice while he was in exile, and that reminded him. But it really has nothing to do okay. with. That didn't. Him I mean, being other lost? than the deja vu of or breaking did it, like, someone. Okay. Because did it weaken him when he got lost? Because I always um, thought those were connected, like. Possibly that's not, like, said that I know mm-hmm. of, but it could be part mm-hmm. of it. Like, it could have weakened his mind in some way or For some reason, I connected them, down. but I don't know why. Like, I always I thought know. that the first one, it was, like, a sign. Mm-hmm. Huh. It could have just been that she could show what it looked like whenever your mind goes crazy, either, whether it's lost or broken. And that's why she had to emphasize that they are two different things, mm-hmm. but it, they, they have a similar effect. Hmm. Which is insanity. I want to find out if there, if Alden's was connected to him being lost, and that's why he like, if it weakened his mind. Because I just yeah. assumed that, but I don't. We know. can see if it's in here. I don't know if that's like confirmed or not. Yeah. Um, Did anyone she... else connect those two? Like, think that they were causes of each other? Because I would like to know if I was. Probably the reason, if you did connect them, it would just be because, like, um, well, at least in my mind. Because Sophie almost fading in book one had to do with her fading in all of book two. Hmm. So it's just kind of that theme of, like, foreshadowing that sort of causes problems in the future. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that. That's true. I think I see it as, like, if you're if you're writing a book and you're writing a plot line, um, you're going to have points that lead to other points. And I guess I just saw a cause and effect for some reason that wasn't there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay. So the next one is whenever Sophie gets back to uh, Havenfield before she is going to tell Grady and Adeline kind of about everything that's happened. And she first gets there and Sylvani starts transmitting to her immediately and Tyrion's like, uh, what's going on, Sophie? And she's like, oh, right, I didn't, I didn't tell you about this. So it says, his eyes widened and she realized, she, she said, Sylvani's calling for me, I had to concentrate because I can't block her. His eyes widened and she realized she never told him about her unusual connection with the alicorn. And she's like, what do you think that means? And he's like, I oh, can't even begin to guess. 320 or 319? Um, it's 319 according to mine, but it oh. might be going into part of page 320 for you. because it No, it's up all on 320 for me, but oh. that's the same note I had. Anyway, oh, cool. keep going. Um, so she's like, and he's like, I can't even begin to guess. I'd long suspected the alicorn we had in the sanctuary had a mind far superior to any creature he'd ever encountered before. But I never thought. And then he gets interrupted, which is suspicious. Mm-hmm. That is a writing device, and that's yes. suspicious. And I also Shannon said, and the unfinished sentences. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. So suspicious. Uh, and I have another connection I can make in the spoilery one, but... Yeah, it's just, he's so suspicious. And if, of course, if he was her dad, he'd have thought about these things before. Like, how could her mind possibly be connected to an eloquence? Like, he would have been part of the planning, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, whoa, it worked. Yep. Anyway, the next part, um, page 320, or like officially page 320, which might be 321. Okay. Um, but they had just gotten home, and Tyrion's like, why don't you wait out here, and I'll go in and answer their questions. Like, just trying to shield Sophie from the hard part. Mm. And I'm like, um, mm. anyway, but it's like, she said, no, it's okay, I'll tell them. Tyrion smiled sadly and offered her his hand. They'd walked several steps together before Sophie realized oh. how natural the gesture felt. <gasps> Tyrion's usual awkwardness around her seemed almost forgotten. Like, he'd stepped into Alden's role, interjections. Al- his Alden awkwardness? Was the, Alden was... That's... A father that figure. Even notes how awkward he's Alden been. was said to be a father figure, and even like Counselor Tarek later, whenever he's like, "Oh yeah, you can come to me with everything." I know you looked up to Alden like a father. Like Shannon intentionally mm-hmm. says that. Back to the book, he'd stepped into Alden's role without even realizing it. She was grateful for it, Aww. but it made her sad too. Hmm. That is all. That is. It's so interesting suspicious. that she mentions his awkwardness. Like mm-hmm. it was definitely intentional that Tyrion is awkward around Sophie, because doesn't mm-hmm. it say awkwardness around her? specifically yes yeah that's a clue if we're right i am i'm like i'm this theory is my theory i'm not i don't i don't know how you could ever disprove it Hmm. especially after book two like book one i was like yeah he's kind of suspicious especially with those scenes in the human world book two it's like no he's not even suspicious anymore it's confirmed it's Mm -hmm. in my mind it's confirmed now change my mind i'm drinking (laughs) coffee like the guy in the meme (laughs) <laughs> yes. Because I'm literally, like, holding up a coffee cup in the same stick. Exactly. And, like, crossed legs looking to the side. 
with the Behind tiny the cup. Desk. Change my mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's gonna be our newest meme on the account. <laughs> Definitely, Chicken Sophie's dad. Yep. Okay, three twenty-five. Do you have one before three twenty-five? Um. Oh yeah. Um. Oh. Sorry, this is another suspicious thing. So. Here we are. So, Tyrion's like, oh, maybe I should stay. I'd hate to have you here alone. And she said, I'll be okay. I have Sandor here with me. It's after he had to, like, put Grady and Adeline to sleep, and he's like, I'll have to talk to Grady about other matters tomorrow. Tyrion said as they stared blankly into space. Uh, Grady and Adeline were staring, mm-hmm. not Tyrion and Sophie. Hopefully they'll have accepted the news by then. Fast forwarding, Sophie's like, I have Sandor here with me. Tyrion nodded. I must say, you're handling this very bravely. Alden would be proud. Would he? Or would he think that she cared less than the others who kept falling apart? Oh, that's a mental struggle I have. Back to this. I suspect your upbringing helps you process grief better than the rest of us, Tyrion added, like he knew what she'd been thinking. Oh. Death and loss are so much more common for humans. Then how come you're not more affected? Tyrion fiddled with the edges of his sleeves. I've known more loss than anyone. Anyway, if you'll really be okay, then I should go. There's much to do before I go to the council tomorrow. I'll be back here in the morning. That... It's so suspicious. That is suspicious because I'm sitting here thinking. The parallel, first of all. Well, it sounds like, oh, yeah. But then also I was like, what has he lost besides his friend? Mm-hmm. Um, because he hasn't had a family and lost someone like like Edeline and Grady. But he says, mm-hmm. I've lost more than anyone. He lost his friend and, and he would have. What? Like, how can he make a statement like that? I've known more loss than anyone. Yeah, I don't think that's accurate, but he could be... Espe- and then he's like, anyway. The suspicious anyway mm-hmm. makes me think he's talking about Sophie. Mm-hmm. And <sighs> he's it. her dad, yeah. Uh-huh. And then, yeah, that's, that's all I have for a and while. And to... Hmm. Unless... Hmm. I'm, I'm sticking with hmm. that. Okay. There's got to be more yeah. to it, I feel like. There's got to be more that's because that's... at least that's, part of it. Yeah. Interesting. My that's next one is really until 328. It's so suspicious, especially Praise. like the, Anyway, so uh, Yeah, the um I've seen more loss than or I've had more loss than anyone. What mm-hmm. was it? I've seen I've seen more loss than anyone. Anyway, isn't it seen? Now I'm making sure. Known. I've known. I've known. So it was mm. him personally, not just him seeing it. That's so suspicious. Hmm. That could and just be a mistake, another thing. But it's here's definitely a, here's hinting. If he's already, like, adopted a child, it seems like it would at least be natural for the council to be like, oh, hey, here's a guy who's, like, adopted a kid before. We could just have him adopt another kid. Those two kids would be able to relate to each other on the basis that they both lost their parents. Like, that would make so much sense. And yet he wasn't even considered in any way as an adoptive Hmm. parent. I don't know. That just seems suspicious. Maybe slightly. It can be explained away, though. Mm Mm-hmm. But. Well, it it could even just not have happened. Like, it doesn't have to be, but... That's a possibility. And he yeah. was like, uh, no thanks, guys. I feel like he would be like, yeah. Well, and then because the parents people. weren't allowed mm-hmm. to know. Or oh, yeah. they weren't allowed to, you know, interact. I can just imagine closely. him fighting with Forkel like, um, I know I'm not supposed to, but I'm good <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and and Forkel will be like, oh, Why? gosh. That's the ending of the suspicious. So you have the next note. Okay. Mine is on 325. I said, um, it's a beautiful description where it says, or Sylvani is projecting images into Sophie's mind to help her sleep, and she says, But Sylvani took her job seriously. She filled Sophie's mind with memories of vivid desert sunsets and moonlit beaches with silver-tipped waves and rich green meadows with flowers in every color of the rainbow, cities and forests and islands and icy tundra, empty, isolated spaces that felt like the world had forgotten them, and crowded, cluttered places where voices smiled and laughed as Sylvani hid in the shadows listening. Isn't that pretty? I only have two notes <laughs> from the passage you just read. First of all, Shannon really likes silver-tipped things. That is second true. Of all, second of all, voices smiled? Voices smiled? Voices can kind of smile. This is my voice not smiling. <laughs> this is my voice smiling. <laughs> That's your voice laughing. <laughs> voices <laughs> smiled. See? <laughs> What? Guys, can voices smile? Prove me wrong. <laughs> I think voices can smile. 
I mean, I can, I, I, I probably know what it means, but it's just an odd way yeah, to say that. It is, definitely. Like, okay, at my workplace, That's something you would sign. overthink. You'd type that and then just be like, yeah. no. At, at my workplace, there's a sign, and it says, wash your hands after da 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 or visiting the toilet. And I was like... <laughs> Yeah, I just went for a cheerful chat with the toilet. That's all I did. Visiting the toilet. I visited it. I sat down. We drank some tea. <laughs> talked about life. What? And then I washed my hands, and they came back. I, I wasted mean, my time. I'm thinking about like we we go to visit Brand. We go to visit the toilet <laughs> <laughs> once a year. Walk in the rooms <laughs> once a year. And you're welcome. You guys get to hear about the hand washing procedures at my job. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing the book, my next one isn't until 328. So do you have any before that? Um, mine is not either. Cool. Um, so if we tags out an eyelash on page, th- ch- page 328, which gives me now five pieces of Malamelt for the book. I have it I have it keeping track on there so I don't have to, like, remember. Nice. And then um, Sandor is literally like me and my siblings. So Sophie and Sandor. <gasps> so... Uh, I have a note on this, too. Yes. Uh, but it's not about that. She's like, I need to go look around a room that Grady and Adeline don't like me to go into. Because she tried to sneak out, and he caught her. And he's like, what? She said, since your job is to report everything I do, that's not my job, Sandor interrupted. If it were, I would have told them how you sneak out of bed to read by the light of the moon jars you keep by your desk. Her jaw fell slightly. <laughs> I get to like, see Calla like... That's literally, okay, but me and Karen will do this. It would be really funny if my dad listened to this podcast, but actually, no, I, I did tell him this. So we'll just see each other doing something, and we'll be like, you know, that's against the rules, right? Mostly it'll be me. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll catch her doing something. I'll be like, you know, that's against the rules, right? And yeah. she'll be like, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, I'm it's, not going to tell on you, and we'll just walk out. <laughs> I mean, it's like that, um, so right now, Kylie and I have bedrooms next to each other mm-hmm. and um she's always up later than I am when she's supposed to go to bed earlier than I am but then I'm up late too when I'm not supposed to be <laughs> um and so it's just kind of like we it's will walk out of the room and just like look at each other and be like okay moving on we both know <laughs> each other's awake at this time but we're just gonna you're both not supposed to be but yeah gonna just, say that. just gonna ignore it mm-hmm. um and then mine and then, sorry this is random but Karis broke the pact we were supposed to have a pact, and she she went and told on me, and I was like, but I didn't tell on her still because I'm nice. So anyway, she's a piece of work. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's all I have for that page. So yeah. mine, it's back here right before where you read, where he says, um, Sophie says, aren't I allowed to have any secrets? And Sandor went, secrets hinder my ability to protect you. I don't need your protection for this. You always need my protection. Okay, all I could think of is Baymax from Big Hero 6. What? <laughs> what page is that? I need to write that down. 328, why? It's just a parallel, um, but I can't talk about it in this episode. 328? With Sandor? Yeah. It's it's just a, a thing Shannon did. 328? Okay. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I read that and I was like, It's just Baymax? Sophie being similar to another. What? All right, my next one isn't until uh, 340. Mine is 331. So it does sound like Baymax. Sorry. <laughs> that was such a nice Yeah, you totally <laughs> just ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I do delayed reactions sometimes. Um, me and my siblings just started rewatching Big Hero 6. Like, mm-hmm. we rewatched it maybe three times, and I have the- no idea why. What? Like, yesterday. We just started rewatching Big Hero 6 three times. <laughs> No, okay, you watched it one of three times yesterday. No, we watched it one of three times the day before yesterday. Okay, so you didn't watch it, it all three times on Not one day. Not on one day. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was like... My siblings did. They watched it all three times in one day. I only Wait, watched what? it once. I only watched it once, and then they replayed it, and I was like, why? Why? Because they do this thing called, we're going to rewatch this over and over until everyone else in the house is tired of it and bans us from it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's a weird thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. My my brother especially. Um, my next one so oh, it's really just a parallel. It's three forty, right? Yeah. I have a bunch before that. All right, go ahead. Oh, three thirty one. I have um written Jolie's bedroom is cool and eerie. Like mm-hmm. reading about it, it's I can imagine it so vividly. And I just I think about that a lot. Like if I were to die right now, then people would go through my room and they'd just see all of these like leftover things of me like <laughs> you know what i mean You're like if i was like, going to oh, die well yeah okay say i I'd die be, i would wonder most about what people would think of my bedroom 
Well, yeah, because then I could see, I would be like, would someone come in here and look at what book I was reading last, where I left the bookmark, things like that, and it's exactly what happened with Jolie. I don't know. I just think about weird things. I mean, that's an interesting connection, definitely. Like, Mm -hmm. how would I feel about someone going through my room 15 years after I died? Yeah, like, would you be able to pick up on my personality based on my room? I think you would. Pieces of it, yeah, Yeah. probably. Um, If I went through your phone after you died. (laughs) <laughs> yes oh oh no 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 <laughs> you'd, be you'd be crying laughing um <laughs> <laughs> that was an extremely embarrassed expression <laughs> what you like looked like <laughs> i just I don't know, know my notes it. my notes in here like the notes app i have the most random stuff in there it would be hilarious i'm weirdly organized about my notes i have them sorted into like 15 it's like my folders and some brainstorming folders. notebook just on my phone it's just I can't. Yeah, I would. I would. I would be worried that I would lose something. So if I have too many notes mm-hmm. and they're not organized, I'll be like, I'll never be able to find this again. Mm-hmm. So I have it organized. I think I have twenty four folders and then some f- subfolders oh inside goodness. of those. I have and one and that's are... called my dream folder. It's like dreams I have. I just write down dreams. That's I have. It. I have like three relating to Keeper. So I have Keeper. I think I have Keeper stuff. Keeper theories. No, Keeper stuff. Keeper games. I'm and then the Keeper Lost Cities podcast I'm notes. Jealous of your organization. <laughs> Okay, so back to Jolie's room. Like, I would like to go in someone's bedroom. <laughs> Listen, okay. So, oh. if people are interesting to me. So, say, like, a historical person had a bedroom and they left everything. You just want to Where go am I going with nosing this? Nosing around in the Yeah, bedroom. and then you get to find out, like, oh, this is what they dreamt. This is what they thought about. This is what they wrote down. This oh is what they goodness. read and what made them how they are. Okay, listen. It's not creepy. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it's not creepy. Quotes. I need to, like, release podcast quotes. I need to be a quotes. biographer. I, okay, I'm anyway. going to write down the summary of what you just said. And we need to start releasing quotes to, like, <laughs> on the Instagram. Like, the, here's the teaser quote of what you're going to get it's in the not podcast. It's creepy. It's cool. <laughs> I want to go through dead people's <laughs> bedrooms after they die. <laughs> You'd learn so much about them. Go through, would you like, say, not historical in a sad figure? Way. <laughs> See, Jolie's, like, okay, guys, listen to this description. It's so cool. Um, Books were still marked to the page Jolie had been reading. Tiny pots of lip color, long since dried up, were still carefully arranged on her dressing table. What's funny is when I was just describing that, my the things that came to my mind were... Um, like lip gloss and books that's weird it's probably because i just read this um Mm -hmm. we're still carefully arranged on our dressing table even a half finished bottle of youth still waited on the small table next to the bed sophie moved on to the closet which was filled with fancy gowns covered in frills and lace um most of them were in shades of purple another detail about the vision prentice had shown her that seemed far too accurate to be a coincidence but it still didn't give her any clue what the scene meant yeah and then it's just a bunch of things um like she pulls out the the um chests from her closet and looks through her stuff and like sorry i can <laughs> feel so nosy like you're just but no but stuff. like if she's dead then you get to find out what she was like and what kind of life she lived and yeah i think it's just cool I mean, it's, it's cool, mm-hmm. especially because it's fiction. <laughs> yeah, it's not some real person yeah, uh-huh. going through some other real person's. Okay, JC, if I die, you can go through my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Let's oh hope that doesn't goodness. happen. But anyway, anyway, <laughs> um, do you have any more before three thirty nine? Three forty. Um, three thirty five. Oh, it's the whole discussion about are you stuck in the elite levels? Like, are you locked in there? Because, um, right here, yep, okay, here it is. My dearest Jolie, the message started, followed by what might have been the sappiest love letter ever written. Oh, man. <laughs> it's probably cringe level oh, my 1,000. Oh, yeah. Oh. Sophie mostly skimmed. It felt strange reading something so personal. Yeah, and moved on to the nosy. next. Which might have been even sappier. Ugh. Same with the one after that. Brant seemed to really miss his girlfriend while she was sequestered away in the Elite Towers, which was strange that he wasn't there with her. Was he older than Jolie? Um, no, Sophie, but anyway. Um, I mean, he might be like a year older. Maybe, yeah. Anyway, um, where it says, 
Brant seemed to really miss his girlfriend while she was sequestered away in the Elite Towers. Are they locked in the Elite Towers? This is a question I have now. Maybe. I think they are. I think that, that like, was said. Yeah, they're like... I think it said that they like... Away. Whenever so they weird. go there, they can't leave because it's distracting from their Keith studies. Keith aren't going to the Elite Levels because that would kind of ruin the series. But they're like almost the age. So I'm going to kind of... Because we brought this up a little bit in the last mm-hmm. one, I think I said this, but I'm going to vaguely say I think that Fitz probably will go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that would be but, Shannon's excuse for like... Oh, really? No. Taking him completely off the table because, you know... Mm-hmm. The, anyway. I don't think that would work, but it could. It could, theoretically. It de- Yeah, it depends. Who knows? She never goes the direction <laughs> I'm thinking, so... The next one I have is 340, so... Sophie was saved from an interrogation from Dex and Morella about what was going on mm-hmm. by Dame Melina's projection flashing across the far wall. She gave her most dazzling smile, welcomed them to a new year at Foxfire, and launched into a string of announcements that Sophie couldn't make herself pay attention to because she was too busy imagining how Dame Melina would take the news about Alden. <laughs> I mean, why is that me? <laughs> That's what I was about to say. And yes. Yeah, and then Dex is, Dex is talking to her apparently, and he goes, she's tuning us out again. And I was like, again, <laughs> me. My friends will be like, I mean, you, you, you like five seconds ago, like, mm-hmm. JC, are you there? Hi. Like me, that last night, you were just looking somewhere else talking, <laughs> and I just stared somewhere. I was like, Sydney, you're staring. Stop staring. Just, like, staring at a point on the wall, and, then, like, five seconds later, I was like, oh, yeah. Um. Okay, my next one is not until page 345. Okay. Oh, mine is too. Um, I just said, the last thing that Sophie needed was to be the girl whose bodyguard threatened the beacon. Even if she had no idea what a beacon <laughs> was, and she still thought it was stupid that she had to call him master. And I was just like, <laughs> these random little interjections by Shannon. It's uh-huh. really funny. Yeah. You see it's Sophie like my almost thinking process. like Keith. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Whenever Sophie thinks like Keith, and it's just funny. Yep. Um, mine for 345 is where it says, um... Okay, Magnet Lido says, He pointed to a silver strip set into the door about a foot over her head. Oh, you're too short to lick it. Hmm, I suppose that means I'll have to open the door for you twice a week. Great, because that wasn't going to be embarrassing. (laughs) Then again, the idea of a shared DNA access strip made Sophie want to gag. She still got grossed out licking the one on her locker. and She was the only one who used it. They all licked the same one? (laughs) Yeah. Ew! (laughs) I mean, do elves get sick? I don't know, but that's disgusting. I think it's implied that they can get sick, but it's yeah. kind of rare. Especially yeah. if they forget to drink, like, their their special water stuff. Mm-hmm. I always forget the name of that. What is it? I mean, they still have germs. Oh, youth. Bottle of youth. Bottle of youth. Thank yeah. you. I always say, like, elixir of life. And I'm like, I know that's not <laughs> right. I mean, it's close enough. Yeah. But it's a shared one. Because I remember um, one time I was telling Eleanor about how... Something about Keeper and something about the DNA strips. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about how you incorporate science into, like, sci-fi. Or, not sci-fi, fantasy. Mm-hmm. Anyway. There's and she was like, hole. wait, they they all lick the same DNA thing? And I was like, no, 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 I think it's on different lockers. But no, apparently there is a shared one. Anyway. I just have to say, there's a plot hole. What? Why can't the elves take Sophie's yes, DNA you've and mentioned. find her parents? I said mm. Shannon will come up with an explanation if it ever comes up. It so much. Anyway. Maybe because it's... They've had her DNA since before she came to the elven world. Why wouldn't they be like, let's just track down the, the people who did this in the first place? Because they have a sample of everyone's DNA because they can test it and match it up with their Foxfire locker. If they ever went Wait, to Foxfire they had and all the DNA nobility did. Or did just um, Alden? They had her DNA. He had to turn it into the council when he broke Prentice's mind. It was shown to the council, and it's actually referenced by one of the councilors in a memory in book yeah, 8.5. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So. I don't know, man. I don't understand. Anyway, um, my next one is until page 349. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, it's just super random. Elven mirrors don't reverse your image like human mm-hmm. mirrors do, and I was like... That'd be nice. It said, but how would she not notice that elven mirrors were different? I was like, well, one of two things. Either Shannon didn't have a good place to put that in book one, or she just decided that just now. And she was like, right here, page 390, yeah. book two. I uh-huh. am making this canon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are things in book eight that I noticed that, where it was like, mm-hmm. 
how did I never hear about this yet? Because that's what people are always mm-hmm. like whenever you introduce new things and really far books in. Mm-hmm. And they're like, why didn't you ever mention that in book one? And there's always oh, some yeah. sort of sort some sort of thinly veiled explanation. It's, I'm like, it's because she thought that the, she was only going to be allowed to write three books. Mm-hmm. So she mm-hmm. decided not to put in a lot of yeah. details. But now she's like, I have nine, I mean, yeah. ten books. She's like, yeah, I'll put in extra details now. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so mine is on 354. Mm-hmm. I just said, hmm, so I gotta figure out why I said, hmm. Oh, this is random, but on page 351, Leto's just laughing at her because he, he, like, basically threw her into the room and she fell on her face in front of Lady Cadence and he just laughs at her and I'm like, he was so mean. Why is he this way? Oh my goodness. He is not a likable character. Okay, I don't know what I was saying here, so I'll just come back to it in the spoiler one. Okay. <laughs> On page 356, Alwyn says, You should be glad I didn't take Keith's suggestion and rename this place the, the Foster Center. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I said, like, Keith already suggested it, and he barely even knew her at this point. Oh, yeah. And, like, he's, he's already to the point. Yeah. He barely knows Sophie. He's talked to her, like, once ever. And he's already to the point where once, he just goes to the doctor. Like three times. Right. Oh, that's true. But he's already to the point where he just goes to the doctor, sits there, and he's like, So, Alwyn, you know Sophie. <laughs> We should name this place after her. <laughs> yes! I love that. It's so random. And Ellen's probably like, like what about Sophie? Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Ellen strikes me as that type of person. And then doesn't he say in Unlocked, like, mentions that he was like, oh, they're cute. <laughs> yeah. I think he probably. does. Probably. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, oh, that's true. Okay. Yep. Um. Let's see. Oh, after, okay, I don't have another one until... 357. Okay, go ahead. Mine's not till 366. Okay. So, Ellen, basically, she, like, she sees light and she has to, like, curl up in a ball, blah, 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 And Ellen's like, thank goodness she finally woke up. Mm-hmm. Do you have any idea what you just put me through? She goes, sorry, that migraine came out of nowhere. It was more than a migraine, Tiergan said, and Sophie turned her head, surprised to see him there. So, I'm going to stop because I already have two things. The first thing is... Ellen's kind of like, I mean, of course you would be scared with your patient, but again, if you don't want to give up on your Ellen theory, there's another piece of free evidence. <laughs> um, then Tiergen, it was more than a migraine. It's kind of interesting, and we'll note this again in a second, because I think that it's mentioned that Ellen actually called Tiergen there. It's, it's interesting mm. that he, out, out of anyone in the whole school he could have called, or Grady and Adeline, or anyone, he was like, oh, Tiergen. Hmm. Well, um, what was going on with her? She, Ellen was shining light in her like over her and it, oh, it caused yeah. a migraine but why did she even go to the healing center in the first place i forgot um let's see i think she was just having a checkup okay interesting oh she she had to do some sort of she had to drink something oh mm. she got she fell off of sylvany okay it says she had bruises had from to... getting thrown from the back of a terrified alicorn in an entire morning of stumbling and falling because her tired muscles couldn't keep up with the other prodigies she finally just went to the healing center interesting interesting because i wondered if it had to do with telepathy then mm-hmm. it would make sense why he would call to you again it's just but a random thing that yeah she just mm-hmm. went there because she was like i hurt and he was like <laughs> and then she was like ow and then mm-hmm. she woke up it was more than a migraine, Tiergen said, and Sophie turned her head, surprised to see him there. Ellen sent Sandor to get me when you wouldn't wake up. Do you remember anything about the last hour? Hour? She had no idea the pain had lasted that long. Do you oh, not wait, remember Hey, me? Sandor, go they get Tiergen. Of all the people, just go get Tiergen. So I don't know who hmm. says this. Do you, it's either Ellen or Tiergen. Do you really not remember me calling your name or shaking your shoulders? Oh, this is Ellen, I guess. Mm. Shaking your shoulders or trying to get you to swallow different elixirs. I guess I blacked out. But she didn't remember blacking out. She thought she'd been awake. Ellen mm. ran his hands through his hair. Do you see any problems, Tiergen? Because I can't find anything phys- physically wrong. Tiergen squinted at Sophie and shook his head. I can't get past her blocking, but I assume that's a good sign. Good sign for what? Sophie asked, not sure if she wanted to know the answer. If your mind were... Tiergen shook his head like he couldn't say it. I think I'd be able to slip through the cr- through the cracks, mm. but your thoughts are as silent as ever. Elwyn is sus, too. Remember? Mm-hmm. We can't say why, but he is sus. Tiergen can't even say, like, if her mind were broken. He can't even finish the sentence. That's hmm. that's suspicious. Yeah. 100%. Um, and she's like, yeah, it's just been a rough few days. <laughs> I'm fine. Hmm. Uh, my next one is on page 359. You said yours is 366? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see what this one is. Um, 
<laughs> she was like uh, trying to figure out who would know where like her human things were and like from her human house and she said well the counselors would know this is her thought process but she couldn't exactly hail them on her and part and ask for a favor could she <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah why not hmm. um and then ooh, our, this is uh so they get this is in foxfire somewhere i guess at, right after lunch um, and Dex and Sophie are talking. Ooh, are we making Dex blush? Marilla asked as she grabbed the seat next to Dex. That's one of my favorite games. <laughs> Mine too, Keith said, sn- snatching the seat on the other side of Sophie, though it's also fun making Foster blush. Sophie felt her face get hot, and he smirked at her. See? Aww. <laughs> and then, Mr. Simpson, Sir Rosings, the mentor monitoring study hall, called, slamming his skinny arm on the desk. Would you like me to extend your detention? tempting but i think i'll pass <laughs> the room erupted with giggles as sir rosings glared at keith but or sophie assumed he was glaring it's hard to tell he had the kind of face that looked like he just looked a lemon <laughs> shouldn't you be sitting with the level five Dex hissed as jinzy dragged over a chair nah someone had to keep foster company keith scooted his chair closer to sophie's mm. earning himself an eye roll from Dex. um book one like the first thing about kenrick and orly is kenrick scooted his chair a little oh. closer to orly's than he really needed to hmm. my mind exploded for a second there <laughs> i wonder if i put it yeah, I said a touch closer to Sophie's than he really mm. needed to. Um, earning himself an eye roll from he, Dex. He ditches Dex his entire grade front. for Sophie. It's like, bye guys. Yep, he left his whole grade for Sophie. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> earning himself an eye roll from Dex, a.k.a. Bront, if we're still mirroring the situations. <laughs> pulled out one of his textbooks and flipped through the pages quickly. He's just like... <laughs> I'm studying. <laughs> and then he, he actually came over there to whisper to Sophie about Alden. Uh-huh. And she said, oh, uh, yeah. He's, he, she said, have you talked to Fitz? And he's like, he isn't answering his imparter. Oh, yeah, he's got a lot going on. Mm. Oh, come on, Foster. Don't hold out on me. Every time anything weird happens, you're always involved. Sophie knew he was joking, but there was a touch of truth to his words. Keith must have felt her mood shift because he yeah. turned toward her. Everything's okay, right? It's just so sweet. Okay, um, I don't have any more and so sweet. Oh, we might have the same note. Mine is on 366. It's just Fitz being grumpy yeah, again. Yeah, exactly. So. Mine too. It just <laughs> says, um, like, listen to Fitz here. She says, if you, wanna, if you want to blame me, go ahead. Wow, I didn't realize I needed your permission, mm-hmm. Fitz interrupted. I should probably mm-hmm. say that with an accent, but... Um, and then he's like, I need your permission. Oh, you (laughs) understand? You understand? I can't do it. Um, he laughed and glanced at Viana, but she was still in stunned statue mode. So you really get why I'm mad then? She didn't, but her guess, her best guess was, um, continue. Oh, he stalked closer. (laughs) You told me that day when you did that weird thing with the blinking. And you skipped, um, you are hiding the fact that your brain has problems. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Ooh, Fitzy. Mm-hmm. Not what you want to say. And then he growls. Keep, and Keith is... <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> That's what I thought, Fitz growled. Oh, my goodness. Keith isn't here to, like, stop him. Mm-hmm. And then here, um... Damaged. Yep. Yeah, well... This is why I liked Alvar in this first book. I uh-huh. think that's enough, little brother, Alvar yeah. said, appearing in the room. Wait, you read read it in an accent. I yeah, think well. that's enough, little brother. No, no. The yeah, Which well... One? Yeah, well, maybe he wouldn't have said that if he'd known you were damaged. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. And then, you okay, Alvar asked as Sophie fought back her tears. She mm-hmm. tried to nod, but she was afraid if she moved, she might crumble to the floor in a heap. Alvar moved closer and grabbed her shoulders. Hey, don't let what he said get to you. Even if he's right, which I doubt he is, it was guilt that broke my dad. Guilt for something that happened a long, mm-hmm. long time ago, before you were even born. Look, I don't know how to make you believe me, but just remember, if you fall apart, then all mm-hmm. of this is a waste. Breaking Prentice led us to you, and my dad always believed you were the key to everything. It's why he worked so hard to find you. So if you let the guilt break you, then everything he did was for nothing. Do you want that? No. Good, he whispered back. He seemed to realize he was still holding her shoulders and let her go, dropping his arms to his sides. He should probably head home before my Iodot brother starts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Iodot. Iodot. That is my personal signature way to say that. I hope you guys start quoting me on that. Um, hmm. But yeah, Oliver is just so nice in this book. <sighs> anyway, I was, I yeah. Mm-hmm. He's very nice. Much nicer than Fitzy. <laughs> Uh, and then chapter 42, page 369. Do you have anything before that? Nope. Um, 
Sophie was just listing the pros and cons of all the counselors, and I was like, first off, <laughs> I want to I want to like write an example of what Sophie's like a a fan fiction almost. I don't know what it would be called of like what she would have written, like a pro Bront. Don't we have it? Bront is alive. Con, is it in, Bront? Is it in unlocked? I don't think so. Okay. Because we just have like information about mm-hmm. the counselors. But, yeah, that's really funny that she, like, was legitimately, like, okay, so we're just going to write out yeah. all the counselors and write what's good and bad about them. And at this point, I mean, like, she would have at least trusted probably Kenrick enough. Or Tarek. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yep. Next one. Oh, Grady said, Bront's planning something very difficult for your session tomorrow. Something the counselors and I, well, he says it's necessary. And I said, um... It seems like a lot of the counselors didn't agree with Bront on that. Because Grady says the counselors and I. Is that like mm. all of the other counselors besides Bront were like, you can't do that. Doesn't that overrule his vote? Like he can't. Or was a majority already against Sophie at that point? Read it again. Bront. Bront's planning something very difficult for your session tomorrow. That's where he inflicts mm-hmm. on her. He, th- Something the counselors and I, well, he says it's necessary. Mm. <laughs> Bront po- probably pulled his card again where he's like, I'm senior I have, counselor. Yeah, I'm senior counselor. Senior but counselor. Pr- here's pr- the pr- thing. Okay, we know from the end of this book, like, Kenrick would not have allowed that. He doesn't let Bront take over. It's just mm-hmm. so weird. It makes me think that Bront said something like, yeah, well, I could inflict on her. And all the counselors and Grady were like, what? No, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, we'll see if you can stop me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he was just like, okay, we'll see if you stop me. Logically, you can't. And so, he, I, I feel like he probably didn't give permission. But everyone was just like, oh, no, he's going to do this. Yeah. <sighs> oh, man. Probably because Shannon needed it to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so, and, yeah, I have the, my next one isn't until 372. Mine's on 372. It's probably the same one. You yeah, I just, this whole scene, I just wrote down, Bron- whoa, what the heck, bruh? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Okay, we have a little bit of a different one, probably, because uh-huh. I, I said, uh, where Bryant was like, I suppose you'd rather make everyone feel happy and loved. Is that possible? Once again, your ignorance is exactly. astounding. Only negative emotions can be inflicted, Sophie. Fear and pain and helplessness works best, though anger works too. Uh, by the way, Bronte, you wrong, buddy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it was just, and then right before that, Sophie's like, I don't like hurting people. Yeah. It's just like, I can relate to her. And, and also, why is, why is he so grumpy? Yeah. My For goodness, real. dude. Um, like I said, Bront, what the heck, bruh? And he's he's <sighs> very, he's very INTJ, but like INTJ that's like, F I, I don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bront's sigh was so loud, she was surprised she didn't shake the walls. <laughs> I said, for goodness sake, he's not a guster. Like, yeah. he's not... They're just gonna... Oh, my goodness. Anyway. How do you sigh like that? I have not, so I don't know. <laughs> you have to, like, scream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> scream sigh. I've probably scream sighed before. At my brother's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what page uh, is next? Oh, and then uh, the same page. Uh, she he says... There was glee in his eyes as he lunged for her, pinning her good to the wall. What are you doing? She asked, trying and failing to squirm away. Something several of the counselors think I won't be able to do. Hold up. No, they think you shouldn't do it. Not that you can't. Well, I mean, some of them may think that she has an impenetrable mind, but I think probably a main part of their concern isn't that, oh, no, you, even if you do do it, Bron, it's not going to hurt her. No, they're like, Bron, you can't abuse a child oh, yeah. what my dad was so <laughs> mad at this like mm-hmm. he's in book five and he's still like and Bront is like uh, i mean other than that Bront is similar to his like personality like his logical side mm-hmm. and so i'm like i thought that my dad would warm up to Bront. no my dad's like he abused a child <laughs> what on earth this is a yeah. kid's book mm-hmm. so yeah my yeah it's just like it's Dude, like the equivalent what? even the, if it didn't work you were trying to hurt a kid yeah it's like the equivalent of crucio in harry potter right basically you can't do that to people that's yeah. anyway mm-hmm. <sighs> my next one is 377 um i have 374 okay. his bright white teeth were all she could focus on his brunt <laughs> bit down and said i was what? right about you and now everyone will know <laughs> He's Bro, what? I said, why is he so terrifying? I'm scared. He bends down. And it's like, like, yeah, everyone knew I was And right. all she can think is, wow, your teeth are so bright. 
Oh my goodness. Um, uh, That's kind of hilarious. One thousand ninety. Like, I just imagine Sophie something. like staring at his teeth. He's just staring at his like, teeth. <laughs> That picture. If that's not in the movie, I'm assuming. <laughs> no, please don't put that in the There's movie. There's like a it's zoom creepy. in on Bront's teeth. <laughs> That'd be really funny. What I would so be like. <laughs> this is why they should put me as director because I would be two of the book, mm-hmm. like to the Hire point where I'd both. be like, yeah. zooming in on Bront's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have to use whitener. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on page the next one. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's still three. Page the next one. <laughs> 374 still. Page the next one. <laughs> They're all called the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, 1093 highlighted. 1093 I almost people. I out my coffee. Sorry. <laughs> they said, not that Sandor needed an order to freak out and become overprotective about her safety. And I was like, why would you highlight that? That's another one that's been highlighted? 1093 times. <laughs> Does not compute. Um, there are a lot better things to highlight. To highlight than, than that. Like <laughs> the, descri- the, the beautiful thing. description I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Let's see. Oh, a little a little bit of a weird thing. Master Leto has a mood swing here. The seconds ago, he was laughing, pushing her on the floor, and like, ah, you fell. Oh, it's so annoying that I have to open the door for you. Wait, what? Yeah, like, he, okay, f- so right before she went into her, her polyglot session, he, like, basically pushed her in, and she fell on her face in front of Lady Cadence. Lady Cadence <laughs> was like, <sighs> and then whenever he opened the door, he was like, oh, great, I'm going to have to open the door every single day. Oh. Oh, yeah. So, but he had a mood swing all of a sudden. Master Leto had insisted on helping Sophie down the tower stairs. Even though she told him he felt she felt fine after taking the elixir, he kept mumbling that she was far worse than she realized. And when he brought her to Sandor, he demanded that Sandor rushed her to the healing center. Mm. Save that for the spoiler episode. Okay. This is page 374. Cool. Um, just 374. Okay. Uh, and then it says that it gave her something else to think about besides Bronze words, which were still swimming around in her head, making her queasy every time teeth? she tried to process. <laughs> and That's what teeth. she said. That's all she could focus on. Yeah. His teeth. Um, and then Keith comes to the healing center, and this might be close to your note. I'm on 375 now. That's a good quote for the Instagram. Sorry. What? Wait, what did you something say? Something about Bronze teeth. <laughs> if, if Sophie doesn't stare at Bronze teeth in the movie, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what'd you do? She asked Keith, trying to stop herself from thinking about it. Keith smirked. You're not the only one who can be mysterious. He shattered the bottle he was using to catch a tornado and cut his hand on the glass. Ellen answered for him. <laughs> I would so be Ellen right there. Whoa, way to kill all the fun. Keith complained as he unwrapped his hand and flexed his fingers, and it was more like a scratch. A scratch that needed three coats of wound wipe to seal it. And you get on to me for being bad at elementalism, Sophie teased. Hey, miss, I've almost exploded the school. I'm awesome at elementalism. I just mm-hmm. couldn't concentrate today. <laughs> Aw. Ellen turned to look at him. Everything okay? Oh, he's already so nice to Keith glanced at Sophie. You tell me. I tried to stop by Everglen after dinner yesterday, and the gnomes told me the gnomes wouldn't let me in. They said the family Aww. wasn't accepting visitors, and Keith Fitz still won't answer my mail. decided on his own he was going to go by El- Ever- Everglen to see his friend. Uh-huh. And they were like, nah, bro. Get out, you're not allowed here. Um, I think you have the next note. Um, my okay. next one isn't, oh, it's just, uh, it's on 377, and it's super random, so I'm just going to interject really quick. Uh, every new word about, because she explained it to him about Alden, every new word made Keith turn paler. There's an example of paling. Go ahead. Hmm, interesting. So, mine is, I just wrote down, how is that better, Keith? Because they go, um... Alden's mind is broken, Elwyn said when she couldn't. Keith blinked. You mean like he has a wound from when he's cracked his skull, right? <laughs> That's what he means, right? Like, Keith like, is like, come up with okay, so he's, yeah, but it's funny that he's like, he has a wound from when he cracked his skull. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> Please tell me so he cracked his skull. Mm-hmm. Please. <laughs> oh, I, um, so whenever he... Whenever he turns pale, I just realized I wrote in my note, all I'm saying is that it's mentioned later that in the series, empaths are more fragile, more prone to shatter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oop, Keith, better cheer up. Um, After a series of deep breaths, Keith sat back up, (laughs) wiping sweat off his brow. I just, I can't, I mean, it's Alden. He's always been like, he didn't finish, but Sophie knew what he meant. Alden felt like a father to her, too. Keith sniffed and smudged away a tear. Sorry, he mumbled. I just, I never thought. His voice cracked and he cleared his throat. And there's nothing anyone can do? 
So he was, I said, oh, my buddy. Yeah. It's uh-huh. like so upset. It's just sad. Ugh. So my next one is perceptive Keith because they say Elwin sat next to him on the edge of the bed. Apparently not. All of the telepaths who checked him have said it can't be undone. Is that true? Keith asked Sophie. It took her a second to remember to nod. <laughs> she might be clinging to a weak hope. Sorry. I'm Good. Yeah, I'm coughing. <laughs> she okay. might be clinging to a weak hope with both fists locked tight, but that was her secret. Keith's eyes narrowed, but he didn't say anything else. So, <laughs> you good? I just looked up and she was swaying, singing. <laughs> yes, I'm good. It's just a song with the lyrics. So whenever people say words that are in a song, the song gets yeah. like in a loop on my head. Uh-huh. She said she'd been holding her hopes or something, and I, uh, you know, it's different now. I've been holding my hopes waist high so they don't tumble down. Keep me yesterday bound. I've been holding my breath because I don't want to be let down. But we're too far for that now. So I'm saying it out loud. You said it's I've been holding now. my breath. A different song with I'm. A, I've been holding my breath started playing in my head. So yeah. nice. Um, but <laughs> anyway, did you hear what I said? Yes, I was actually listening. What Sorry. was I saying? <laughs> You were saying that um, oh, she can't tell Keith. Uh huh. And it, Keith's eyes narrowed, but he didn't say like, anything. Mm-hmm. Well, he's also an empath, so he can he can feel her emotions not touching her. So he's like, uh, I feel you hiding something. I will question you later mm-hmm. whenever he's not here. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally me with okay, Will. I think I've said his first name, so that's fine. Uh, I have literally done that with Will. I would be he would be saying something, and I was like, oh, because of this. And my mom. Oh my goodness, this stuff is happening. And okay, we've got to stay on track. I'm sorry. This is this is fast, but like I, I basically can, can guess stories out mm-hmm. of people, and whenever they whenever they just say a thing that's vague, I'm like, we'll talk later. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, that's and, how I am with Kylie and her crushes. <laughs> yeah, I just look at her. She's like, no, no. I'm like, and you're like, mm, mm, well, maybe. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Where is it? Oh, this is so cute. Uh, he's like, I won't tell anyone about the plan. This is whenever he says. Is this 382? Uh, 379. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, basically, okay. he's like, I'll question you later. Uh-huh. Um, and so this is his question, her, questioning her later. He's like, I won't tell anyone if that's what you're worried about. But whatever you're planning, I want in. I want to fix Alden just as much as you do. And if we work together, it'll happen twice as fast. Actually, three times, since I clearly count for double. Keith, there's nothing anyone can do to fix a broken mind. I'm not talking about anyone. I'm talking about you. And I know you're up to something. I can feel it. He grabbed her hand, sucking he in a slow breath. He didn't even know she was a telepath. Did he? This is book he... two. They find that out at the end of book one. Then why did he near... Oh, you're right. Why does he mirror his eyes at her then? Oh, because she's, um... Sorry, I she's sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Um, because she's... Okay, never mind. It's not because he thinks she's a telepath. It's, it's because, because he thinks she's up to something. Yeah, okay, you're right. Oops. Um, but he said he grabbed her hand, sucking in a slow breath as the crease between his brows relaxed. I can feel your hope. It's not much, but it's there, and there has to be a reason for it. Besides, you're getting, you're going to need my help. Who knows the vacars better than me? Please, oh. Sophie, he whispered. I need to do something or I'm going to go crazy. Oh. That's very Keith-like. I need to do something or I'm going to go crazy. He said, she's like, we can't talk about it here. Look at you wanting to ditch study hall. So people might say I'm rubbing off on you, which is an awesome compliment, by the way. (laughs) I didn't mean now, but come to Haven Field after school. She walked away before she could change her mind. It's a date, Foster, Keith shouted, turning every head in the corridor and making her grind her teeth so hard her jaw hurt. Have you seen the art of this? Looking forward to it. No. There's art of this and it's amazing. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. I think it's like (laughs) so-so doodles or something on Instagram. Anyway. Looking forward to it. That made one of them. Wait, what? He said he's oh, yeah. looking forward to it. Um, and then my next one isn't until... Okay, my um, next one is 383. Mine's 382. So I said 382. Okay. I did not realize this is mentioned here. So guys, hang on to this. Um, she's talking to Keith and she says... It says, she stared at her hands, trying not to think about the fury she'd seen in Fizz's eyes the day before. Um, that no matter what you, oh, he's making, or she says, um, wait. Oh, three conditions. And so she names each condition, and then the last one she says, that no matter what you learn, you won't hate me. Why would I hate you? Just promise, okay? Uh, that one's a no-brainer. Still not so sure on the whole letting you boss me around thing. The last one's easy. She nodded, still not looking at him. So that's it, right? We have a deal? 
I did not realize she made him promise not to hate her. And then... It all comes full circle eventually. Mm, I did not know this. I, I noticed that because whenever I saw the thing uh -huh. in the other the, like the other thing and I was like oh mm -hmm. anyway um the next thing my next one yeah okay so my 383 uh, she's talking about how she was listing the pros and cons of all the counselors before mm -hmm. it says she narrowed it down to either Emery or Kenrick either of whom she'd probably be okay with approaching mm. I, I personally Sophia recommend Kenrick strongly <laughs> Strongly, Counselor Emery is a turncoat and a liar. Anyway, turncoat. Oh, kind of. Um, <laughs> I literally said verbatim. I recommend Kenry. I wrote these notes like several months ago, so it's really funny for me to go back and like mm -hmm. see what I said. Anyway, um, but the problem is figuring out how to ask them. She doubted she could just leap to Eternalia and knock on their doors. Ha ha, ha ha. <laughs> Y'all will see. I said, you can. <laughs> <laughs> My next one is on page 384. Same. Oh, it's a whole bunch about Keith. Yeah, mine just says, it's just Keith with laughing faces. So should we, you can read your highlights. So one of them is, be glad the council didn't stick you with my family. I'm sure my dad would have volunteered. He finds you fascinating. <laughs> Sophie tried not to cringe. Your dad seems intense. That's putting it mildly. Do you know we have an entire room in our house dedicated to the wonder that is him? He's mm. covered the walls and portraits and awards and has a life-size statue of himself in the center, carved out of luminite so it glows. I used to have nightmares about it coming to life and trying to eat me. So when it started a <laughs> fox fire, he cleared out the room next to it, saying, we'd fill it with all my honors. So far, it has this pile oh, of Oh, he cleared slips. out the room next to it. Mm -hmm. That's the Effort. most fatherly thing he's done. Yeah. Wow. I'm impressed. So for Cassius. And then he put a pile of detention slips in it and said that's Keith's honors. Like, I mean, mockingly. That's kind of what Keith says, though. Yeah, but it says he, <laughs> yeah. laughed, he laughed as he said it, but it sounded slightly bitter. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Yeah, I just have laughing faces because he's like, the, okay, uh, not, this is so I, boring. Um, yeah. Sorry. You go ahead. I, I have a note about the Luminite th oh. statue in the room okay, thing. Okay, go ahead. Um... I'm not gonna lie, I thought that Adrian Agrest and Miraculous had that, and I reread this, and I was like, like I thought that was something from Miraculous that Adrian Agrest oh. had cleared out a room and like told him that he had to fill up the room with honors, and then I read this and I was like, wait, that was key. <laughs> like I, I completely thought it was a different character. Wow. Because <laughs> they're so similar. Yeah, I mean, and I was like, oh yeah, that was Adrian who had like I just knew that was a concept, and I was uh -huh. like, oh that was key. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just pointing out how funny. He's, like, hilarious in this one. What did he say? Um, I'm looking for highlights. Just the whole, uh, this is so boring. Keith whined as he got up to wander. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's just random. I love yep. that. There's, like, at least ten O's here. I want to count them all. <laughs> Sophie's awesome lying skills on, like, the next page. Keeps helping me with something. <laughs> Grady, Grady, it says Grady knocked and peeked his head in the doorway. Oh, I thought you were up here with Dex. Oh, nope. Keith is helping me with something. <laughs> and Keith goes, I'm teaching Sophie some tricks for using her photographic memory. <laughs> he just interjects right uh -huh. there. Figured it can't be too easy, too early to help her get ready for midterms, given what happened last year. Oof. <laughs> it's a Grady smile, but he didn't look convinced by Keith's story. Well, either way, I need you to come downstairs. Is something wrong? Not necessarily. Bront was a bit concerned after what happened during your session today, and he's demanded a demonstration to see how Sylvanie's progress is coming along. Mm -hmm. I tried to stall them until the weekend, but I was overruled. The entire council's waiting for you outside. <laughs> Granny looked nervous, but Keith cracked up. Only Foster gets the council to make house calls. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and then my next one isn't until 388. When's mine it? is 389, so oh. go ahead. Um, Grady's like walking down. He's like, if Bronze Theory is right, it would affect Sylvanie, but it's not right and it's not important, and you're going to show them. What's Bronze <sighs> Theory? What it's not important. Kind of sounds like it is. Keep jumped in, grinning as Grady spun to face him. Forgot I was standing here, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I. What are you doing here, Keith? Foster invited me. <laughs> um, and then there's one more funny thing. It's uh, mm -hmm. eventually. Okay, I, it's probably the same one as me, so. Can I read it for mine? Yeah. Okay. So he says. Oh, he's he's wrong, Sophie. Who is talking here? 
Oh, Grady's talking. Okay. He's wrong, Sophie. Bronn's been wrong about many things. This is another clear example. Of course he's wrong, Keith agreed. If anyone's malfunctioning, it's him. I heard him try to laugh one time, and he sounded like a freaked out banshee. That was one of mine. I, 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 and then Grady just goes, exactly. It doesn't exactly. mean anything. I, I, I quoted that to one of my siblings, and they were like, where is that in this series? <laughs> um, And then, the, this is debatably the funniest thing in the first at least the first three books to me uh, the 12 regal elves st stood a safe distance from Sylvanie's pasture um, and Emery's like oh thank you for agreeing to this demonstration what do you want her to do Grady asked squeezing Sophie's shoulder how about a flying demonstration Emery suggested one that doesn't involve feces Bron added <laughs> especially glittery feces Kenrick joked flashing Sophie a wide smile whoa what's all this about sparkly poop Keith asked what is the Simpson boy doing here? Bron snapped. I'm Foster's personal bodyguard now. Gigantor wasn't cutting it. <laughs> Keith is helping so we get an early start preparing for midterms. <laughs> How is he <laughs> so, like, quick to respond? He's Just like, the I'm the person. personal bodyguard in front of the entire <laughs> council. <laughs> I just love the back and forth. I, uh -huh. want, I want scenes with, I, I, like, I want to see fan fictions of this. Bront, Kenrick, Grady, Keith, Sophie, all in a room. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> just, like, trapped there for some reason. Like, the power went out and they mm -hmm. can't get the door open. I don't know. I feel like that would be really funny. Yeah. Okay, let me. <laughs> the power went out. So, my next note on 391 says that's actually kind of brave of Keith because he said that in front of the whole council. He was just yeah. like. Yeah, nice. He's just like, hi, all your friends. Yeah, hey, people. you guys. <laughs> I'm a bodyguard. You guys uh -huh. didn't know about me. <laughs> um, my next one is, like, basically on the same page, or maybe it's the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> to say Sophie arrived back at Havenfield to pandemonium would have been underestimating things. Or, sorry, understating things. Greatly. Bront was screaming at Grady. Grady was screaming at Sandor. The counselors were screaming at each other. The only one not freaking out was Keith, who, got, who was also the first to spot her. He gave her a thumbs up and she tried to smile, but everything was spinning and blurry and her ears were ringing and her head was throbbing. And I'm just, like, that mental picture uh -huh. for me is so funny. Like, Bron <laughs> screaming at Grady, Grady screaming at Sandor, all of the counselors screaming at each mm -hmm. other. And I this, have the same. Cave is just like. So I didn't connect it until now. You're on page 398. Um, I guess so. Oh, wow. My next one says LOL in 398. So I'm reading the exact same thing. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're just screaming. And <laughs> she's about to, like, faint. And Keith's just like, thumbs up. And then it says she could tell something was wrong before anyone even said it. Mm -hmm. Especially, everyone was giving her a worried look, especially Keith. And Grady's like, you're not mm -hmm. fine, Sophie. You faded again. Yeah. Oh, I love everyone noticed them and shouted something like, where have you been? Are you crazy? What happened? Yep. I just that that whole scene from when Keith comes down and argues with yeah. Bronson and Kendrick uh -huh. to her. And the way Shannon like she doesn't put effort into describing it eloquently. She just mm -hmm. describes it as Sophie would see it. Mm -hmm. It's I kind like of that. amazing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um and then it says like she she went in, she went back out. So this is a few pages later. It's like she went back outside to where very twelve Twelve very serious-looking counselors and a smirking cube were waiting for her. Oh my goodness! I'm, I have said I'm sure some of them are probably pretty scared too, because like they, they didn't know what was going on. Yeah, my next note is on 400, um, and this we might have to move this to the spoiler one, but I don't think so. Um, how did she fade from teleporting? Um, I was a little lost. Oh, she leapt back. So she, she they teleported back? away, but then she put a hand on Sylvani and leapt them back because she couldn't get Sylvani to teleport them mm. back. Oh, yep. Found it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can just cut um, that out if you want. No, you're fine. Because people might have the same question. Mm. Um, and then I n do have a lot of notes on Tarek being suspicious right after this. If you're uh, curious. A and little. If you're curious and you're not, like, caught up in the series, you can just go and, like, read right around these pages. But Oh, if you, were, you weren't talking to me. Oh, no, no, no. I was talking about that. <laughs> I was like, I do. I have Who a few notes. Said, okay, go ahead. I have a ton of notes about mm -hmm. it, but we've already read them all, and I don't I don't want to list them all mm -hmm. out again for people who've already listened to that episode, so if you haven't if, if you haven't finished the whole series, finish the whole series, and then go listen to the Tarek is Sus episodes, yeah. because uh, those are, he's very suspicious, and those just uh, talk about it in a lot are more detail sure? than we have time right now. Oh, yeah, they are Tarek, not Tarekin. Yeah, Tarek is, Tarek yeah. is suspicious, too, but for a different reason. Um, When's your next note? My next one, it's going to be a while out, so you're okay. you're good. 402, I just have he, 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 because Grady rubbed his 
temples. So, Keith Simpson? What about him? What about Dex? What about Dex? That one. Classic. Mm-hmm. That one's really funny. Classic. I've seen that, and it's like when the characters in your book start shipping each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, 407 is yours. I don't, I don't have the page number right here, so just go okay. ahead. 407 um, is when they're all... Like, Dex, Morella, all of them are talking. Mm-hmm. And I just said, it's still weird to me to read when they weren't a friend group. It's just strange. Mm-hmm. And this is right uh, near that. It's like Dex was sulking about the fact that, that she was hanging out with Keith after school. And it said, uh, she made sure to be his partner during channeling practice in PE, and that helped him get over it. Or it did until Keith hooked his arm through hers on the way to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then... Very close to that, she goes to her telepathy session with Tyrion, and he's mm-hmm. like, oh, wow, uh, it, that's quite an aroma, because she had detention with Lady Cadence and Small Bad, and she was like, yeah, Cadence is great. And he's like, okay, I wanted to talk to you about something else. I know you've heard Bront's theory. She slouched in her chair, wishing she could shrink away from this conversation. You mean the one about me being defective? I believe malfunctioning was the word he used, but yes. Are you Okay. He's just so nice. Mm-hmm. Like, he's so empathetic to her. Uh, yeah. She kicked the back of her shoe. Or, I don't know, do you think I'm malfunctioning? He was quiet for a long time, twisting the edge of his cape so tightly she was surprised it didn't rip. I I think sometimes we forget that you, like all of us, have limitations. Just because the black swan tweaked your genes to refine your abilities doesn't mean you're perfect. But what if I was supposed to be? Then the black swan had impossible expectations. Maybe, she mumbled. How much do you know about them? Not as much <laughs> as I'd like. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that you never actually answer any of my questions? A hint of a smile peeked from the corners of his mouth. I'm sorry, I wish I could tell you what you want to hear. The only thing I know for sure is that they control what they want you to know. I have no doubt that someday the Black Swan will give you the answers you seek, but it will be when they decide the time is right, not a second sooner. He's so suspicious. And then my note was, you're one of the most suspicious owls in the series. You know that? (laughs) Um, And Mm -hmm. then he tells her the Call Swan poem, and she goes, it's about swans? Yes, he said carefully, like he knew where her mind was already headed. But it's an old dwarven poem, centuries and centuries old, long before the Mm -hmm. Black Swan is even a whiff of an idea. Not to mention, very few of us pay attention to dwarven poems. My mother happened to have an affinity for them, which is the only reason I know it. Sure. He's so suspicious. And then um, he says, anything is possible, Sophie, but it's like holding a key and no lock. If you don't know where to use it, the key is meaningless. She sighed, hating that he was right, but she was right too. She could feel it. Mm -hmm. Um... And then my next one isn't until she's back in detention. What page? Um, I don't have pages. Oh, oh okay. My next one is not till 427, so I think it's after that. Go ahead. Um, it's just Dex being sweet. He says he pulled the thin notebook toward him and wrote something in the margin, then he scratched it out and wrote something else, scratched that out and wrote something else, staring at it for several seconds before he finally nudged it back, Aww. not looking at her as he did. I never see you anymore. I know. <sighs> Dex. My Baby. poor buddy. <laughs> and then my next one is at the very beginning of chapter 47. That's all I know. Okay. Well, let me see where we are. Mine's at not until 48. So go ahead. Okay. Um, she it says she's at the offices of the counselors, 12 identical crystal castles with twisted swirling spires. Are the offices different buildings than their castles? I don't know. Because it says, like, in the same sentence. Well, no, it's two different sentences, but in the same like place 12 identical crystal castles with twisted swirling spires the offices of the counselors but everywhere else i see them called the counselors castles maybe maybe it's are they the same yeah i don't know why would they have different buildings because they can make them as big as they want i don't know i don't know man i, I was mm. just confused um and yeah. then um Tarek is I guess suspicious we have again at other times the castles are mentioned and see yeah well i did and i compared it and i was like huh i don't see any mention of anyway yeah i don't know it's probably the same building i think Mm -hmm. um but Tarek is suspicious for the rest of that chapter and that's about all i have you can go ahead we may have the same note here you go ahead um i don't have page numbers oh yeah okay it's just (laughs) i just wrote down lol shimmer booty oh yeah where is it? Personally, um, I insist on being called yeah, Sparkle Fanny. If you're on. jealous because if you're jealous because you don't have a cool nickname, we can start calling you Sparkle Fanny. Keith offered. Thanks. I'll pass. Suit yourself. Personally, I insist that you call me Shimmer Booty from now on. 
<laughs> Keith, Sylvanie added. Keith, why? Keith, glitter butt. Can Sophie you rubbed her temples. Like having that much input at once, you just yeah. Like, I would be like, really, guys. Like no, he's going while she's screaming, and you're just like, oh my uh-huh. gosh. <laughs> um, right the around shimmer this shimmer moody. It sounds like like a really extra pirate. <laughs> Shimmer booty. I don't have pirate accents. I don't know. Um, don't you dare, Sophie said, blocking Keith as he tried to flop on her bed. You smell like a wet rat. You can sit on the floor. I've quoted <laughs> that to my brother before. Boys do really smell mm-hmm. bad, especially when they're like my brother and refuse to wear deodorant and less forced. Yep. My my note there just says Keith. He's so funny. <laughs> oh, cause um, right here. Wait, where is it? When he said, boy, she she was talking about the boy who disappeared memory, mm-hmm. and she said, I was five, Keith. What, and cute boys didn't in- exist when you were five? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, he says, well, it's true you hadn't met me yet, but. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Keith. Ridiculous. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you literally so funny? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So I, my note here is. And then I, it just says, Sophie tuned him out. I love that. <laughs> me. That's amazing. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Um, my note here says I have random bursts of nostalgia while reading this because I haven't read it in so long. So like as I was reading this, I was just cracking up and like I feel like a twelve year old again reading this for the first time. It was so funny. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um on four four thirty my note is just I love him. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's the same that's the thing I was just mm-hmm. reading. Then. The cute boys didn't exist when you were five. Wow. Well. And like right around then he mentions that Bramble match thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like eight years ago they had the championship that happens every three years, which means that one year from exile, which is the beginning of Lodestar, there should have been another Bramble match. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway. Beginning of Lodestar. Yeah. Could they have missed it? Yeah. Could they have missed well, it? Well, no, because they just started it back. Yeah, it would have been the... Oh. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, maybe. Probably. That might be fixable. That might have been it. Yeah, yeah, we can't explain why, but that's possible. Do you have anything around, like, the funeral? Um, I think I texted oh, no. you about this. <laughs> the mournful moans. <laughs> It's so, so strange. Creepy. Where is it? Oh yeah, Sandor said his high pitched voice sounding way too perky with all the mournful moans. <laughs> like the alliteration <laughs> just makes it weirder. No. I just choked like fully, almost squirted water through my nose. Anyway, uh, ha- like, have you ever been to a funeral? It's not. It's not that bad. <laughs> mournful moans. Oh, I mean. In the elven world, I guess it's more rare. Humans are more like, yeah, the person died. But that would make them more reserved and, like, confused. They're not... Maybe, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just such a funny (laughs) description. I don't think she thought that one through. Oh, yeah, I have have that screenshot. I should take you Mm -hmm. home with all the mournful moans. She's like, no, no, I'll be fine in a second. Um, uh, Sophie? Sophie looked up and found Tyrion frowning Mm -hmm. at her. Here to be sus. Yep. She's like, yeah, it's just sad. These always are. He turned to stare at the forest. Hard to believe only a short few weeks ago I was here for yours. Oh, sus. Wait, sus, you were at my sus, funeral? Sus. Of yep. course I was. Did you think I wouldn't be? I don't know. I try not to think about it, honestly. It's kind of weird. Yes, I suppose it is. He fell silent for a second. You would have been pleased by how many people came. Almost as many as today. She couldn't help turning back toward the enormous crowd, which was slowly forming into a receiving line. Wow, Really? Of course, Sophie. Your loss was deeply felt by all of us. Well, I guess it's a good thing I'm still alive then. He smiled, but when he spoke again, his voice was a bit thick. Yes, it definitely is. Ah, it's a sus! Yeah, I just oh have the emoji goodness. that's like... Like, oh, well, y'all um, can't see my face. But that's that's <laughs> like suspicious uh, Raised emoji. eyebrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I should probably go to Tyrion's eye gummies. Every time! Every <laughs> time! Oh man, I have. I if need you to, leave, can, what page quickly. is that on? Um, four thirty-nine, I think. Yep. Uh, okay. four forty, basically. Four. Yep. Four forty. Top of four forty. Um, Every I'm just time. gonna bring if that you up. Leave, spoiler, if you leave, if you just randomly say, "I should probably go," you're immediately suspicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because like, it's just like, ah, like why? Why can't we let this conversation continue? Because mm-hmm. it's too awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so the next one is... I have 443. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I think it's probably the same thing. Where Keith is talking about fits? 
Uh, well, okay, mine is right before that. It's okay. whenever she first sees Keith. Excuse me, did somebody give you permission to cut? He tried to sell the joke <laughs> with a weak smile, but his eyes were too red and swollen. And then, uh, I'm sorry, an elegant woman with blonde hair woven into an intricate braid said, Just ignore my son if he's bothering you. He's not bothering me. Sophie glared at Keith's mother and leaned closer to ask him, Are you okay? Aww. And he just says, I've been better. Aww. <laughs> yep. And then... It's the part where she's talking to Fitz, and, uh, Is that, whoa, chill, man, this is so Yeah, uh uh-huh. She almost says, I miss him, and Fitz says, don't. Fitz snapped. You don't get to. Whoa, chill, man, Keith said, stepping between them. This is Sophie. Keith, it's fine. Sophie looked at Della. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, um, she tries to, like, hurry away, and it's, hey, wait up, Keith called, running after her. I don't want to talk, Keith. I know. I can definitely feel that. But I thought you should know that I could tell what Fitz is feeling, and he's not angry at you. She gave him a look. (laughs) Okay, he's a little mad at you, but mostly his dad and the world. He's freaking out, which I get, but he has no right to take it out on you. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. My note here just says, just keep Fitz. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, these are the days. Like, like I said just a second ago, like... Uh, whenever Keith isn't around to stop him, Fitz just explodes at Sophie. But whenever Keith mm-hmm. is there, Fitz is like, Keith's like, bro, this is Sophie, chill. And Keith's yeah. like, or Fitz is like, Fine. that's one thing you can say about Keith. He never ever explodes on Sophie. Mm-hmm. Or and he's or, so patient with Fitz. Yeah, like, and bruh. Fitz too. Has has he exploded on anyone? Probably his parents. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, Makes sense. and I have a note kind of right before where that was. Mm-hmm. Um. The counselors, it says, it's just like this aside thing, kind of whenever it's describing the scenery, but I kind of, I think I've already elaborated on my Kenrick and Alden were really good friends theory. Mm -hmm. Um, This is kind of, there's this and then another thing that's more proof of that. But the counselors were lined up between them, all 12 in plain green capes and simple silver and emerald circlets. Their faces were blank and they seemed to stare at nothing as elf after elf greeted the family. And I was like, oh, they're numb, Kenrick. Because I'm sure that they were all close to Thalden, yeah. but especially, and Kenrick specifically, in a quote coming up, it's like, he says something, and I'm just like, but we'll get to it, because I want to keep things in order. Yeah. Um, um, I have a note whenever Sophie and Dex are, like, looking at their trees. Is I do, too. That? It just says, on Dex. When Dex kept hold of one, or, one of her hands as they walked, and Sophie couldn't decide how she felt about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's not even oblivious that's intentional yes. that's just like that's just hmm. it's just being not smart sophie uh, yep um later she's talking to vertina and vertina says you've been staring at your reflection so long i've counted all your eyelashes this is this is 51 sorry this is probably way ahead but it's so random oh 51. i thought you meant 51 eyelashes i was oh. like <laughs> she said, did you know you have 127 on your left eye and only 119 on your right? No, Sophie mumbled, t- t- Does that tugging mean she's out of the for the left side. She, and then she tugs out, she has more in her left mm. eye, and so she, yeah, it might be because she's right-handed. Mm. No, Sophie mumbled, tugging out a loose one from the left side. I didn't say you had to even it out. <laughs> Does but, that and mean then she's right-handed? Sophie <gasps> flicked the eyelash away, which means I now have six pieces of melamelt. Sorry. Nice. Nice. Thank you, thank you. Um, you Mine is 450. So it's at the bottom <laughs> where um, Wiley sighed, a thick sort of sigh that was part snort and part sneer and part heavy on the and heavy on dis- the disgust. Then he turned and stalked away without another word. Sandor placed a meaty hand on Sophie's shoulder. <laughs> do not meaty let, hand again. Do not let what the troubled voice says affect you. <laughs> and I was like, did he just say that in front of Wiley? He turns away. Oh, no, he stalks away. He stalks away. Okay, okay so he's we're not good. there, but still. We're good. We're good. Trouble boy mm-hmm. and meaty hand. That's it again. That's the second time. <laughs> yeah. He's been described as having a meaty hand. Dude. I just imagine what? Wiley he- heard that. Do not let what the troubled boys. <laughs> um, my next one is after, um, after, after chapter 51. Oh, you might be close. What was I trying to say here? 453, the note just says car. Car. <laughs> Uh, um, my next note is... I have no idea. Continue. <laughs> Sophie tuned out most of Dame Alina's heartbroken ode to Alden's speech during orientation. <laughs> she... Dame Alina Turned had out. a heart... Bro- no, Sophie oh. tuned out Dame Alina's heartbroken no. ode to Alden's speech during orientation. Ode to Alden? 
We have a lot of odes <laughs> ode in this to Alden series. You what? have the Ballad of Bow and Row, <laughs> Ode to Keith Simpson. Oh my goodness. That brave. My dad died when he read that. <laughs> my dad was like, what is this? And then Alina's Ode to Alden. Mm-hmm. Ode to Alden. The ode married Alden. man. The married man, yes. Oh wow. Oh my goodness. That's a... Alina, honey, how did you, <laughs> you ever... You need to chill. Yeah, wow. Mine's 456. Are you there yet? Uh, you go ahead. I think you're before okay. me. Okay. And I just said the rhyming, because they get the note from the black town that's just, stop searching for things you are not ready to understand. Wait for us to give you your next command. Just imagine <laughs> them trying to rhyme it. Imagining, yeah, just the whole, like, black swan sitting around the table, like, okay, we need to leave that rhymes with command. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wait um, for us to give us your next command. Okay, what else can we do? Um, understand, plan. <laughs> we have to plan. Mm-hmm. The plan. <laughs> um, and then whenever, I don't know what happens, but she's she's crying and Ellen's like really nice. And he says, it's okay, Sophie, it's okay, you're okay. She kept waiting for Ellen to try and pour a sedative down her throat, but he just sat beside her, rubbing her back, and with each stroke of his hand, she felt her breathing slow until the fit had passed and the sobs, sobs had turned into hiccups. And I was like, oh, he's so mm-hmm. sweet. Oh. And then um, my next one's a lot later, so you go ahead. Okay, how, how much later? Because mine is um, 465. What is the note? Uh, go ahead and do yours 52. first. Oh, okay, it's a cute, cute foster moment. (laughs) So, truth, she grumbled, rolling her eyes. So if it's not a big deal, why are you telling me? Well, you're cute when you're panicking, for one thing. We have have the same note. That was literally a handful of time. Yes. Um, Yeah, so, and then the next page. sheesh. (laughs) The next page. Whoa, back the T-Rex up. That's Mm -hmm. a, uh, that's a famous quote. Classic. Yep. I just, I had to mention that, and then... Uh, d- she has to bring Dex in to help. And does he really need to be here, Dex asked, glaring at Keith. Keith smirked. I was just thinking the same thing about you. Sophie rubbed her temples. She had bigger problems than two stubborn boys. One big, very muscly one in particular. We can handle this, Sandor, she said for the tenth time. You're trying to break into a place your parents have not only forbidden you to go, but have spilled a special locked gate specifically to keep you away from. Be glad I haven't barricaded you in your room. <laughs> Whoa, Gigantor is hardcore. And why are Grady and Adeline so... His voice traded off, trailed off and his smile faded. This... Oh, I that, my page ends there. But anyway, that's my note. It's just Dex and Keith fighting there. It's mm-hmm. hilarious. Mine was before, but it's not important. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. Um, but I gotta figure out where I am. Mine's, uh, after that. Okay. Okay. Um, um, go ahead and do yours, though. Let me find where it is. I wish I had the Kindle version, because Makes it things seems easier. so much easier. I might have to buy it for Everblaze. It's, yeah, yeah, I love it. This would go so much more smoothly. Okay, I might have to do it. Um, my note for 476 says, oh, I feel for Sophie here. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Um... Inside, she found another another scrap of paper and a tiny black swan. Not a pin this time, a charm, carved much more crudely with jagged cuts and very little detail, which seemed strange, but she was sure there was a reason. She hoped the clue would make it clearer. There were two lines of text on the note when she unfolded it, but her eyes saw only the first. A small sob slipped through her lips as she read the four words that changed everything. We can fix you. Ah, uh, there's a bug right here. Is that a spider? Ah! Why are there always bugs when I'm recording? It's a spider. I'm gonna kill it. You're welcome. You're welcome for the play by play. Anyway, um, you know, but just that a small sob slipped through her lips as she read the four words that changed everything. We can fix you. That's just imagine the pressure of mm-hmm. what she's been dealing with this the whole year, where she feels like something's wrong with her. She doesn't know what her purpose is, but she's pretty sure that whatever her purpose is has been mixed up. <laughs> mixed up because of what's going on with her and all the pressure to save Alden is rhyming or writing on that and then it, she just gets this note that says we can fix you like I would be crying mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the writing here is like really beautiful yeah I, I love it mm-hmm. um my note is really close to that um it's where she's in her room like right afterwards and she's like I can't tell Grady and Adeline about this 
And then Grady and Adeline opened the door. Why not? Grady asked, pushing his way <laughs> through the door with Adeline right behind him. He glanced at the notes, and his face turned so red it looked almost purple. You have a lot of explaining to do, Sophie, starting right now. Mm. Dude, the amount of trouble I'd be I in. I know, right? <gasps> oh, my And then goodness. aren't they just like, okay, you can go. Well, <laughs> it's, it's like a bit of an argument. I think mm-hmm. Adeline is just like, we should let her go, Grady. And Grady's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. What the Everblades are you talking about? <laughs> Mine says, um, is right before that, I think, 478. Oh, okay. My note that I was looking for and couldn't find is just me saying that's terrifying to exactly what JC just said. We both wrote down the same thing. Like, Wait, the, what? you have a lot of explaining to do, Sophie, oh, starting yeah. right now. Like, that. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> don't kill me. Yeah. More like, don't ground me, I mean. Uh huh. Um, go ahead. I think you're next, probably. Uh, it's, like, whenever Keith was saying how he had to get away from his dad, he's like, he asked me a thousand questions to make sure I wasn't heading off to recreate the Great Gulen incident or something. Sophie's stomach tightened. You told your dad about, relax. I only told him that you had to fly with Sylvanie somewhere and your parents didn't want you to go alone. Mm-hmm. I got your back, Foster. Thank Aww. you, she whispered. Oh, <laughs> so sweet. And the way you read it is, like, extra sp- me too. <laughs> I, I tried I tried to voice act them. It's oh. Fun. Okay. Mine is 478. Oh, it's the same one. We keep having <laughs> the same notes. Well, of course, with Key Foster because mm-hmm. it's Actually, Key it's Foster. not 478, it's 487. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> my next one is 491. Okay, my next one is when Adeline hands Sophie an overstuffed satchel, and she's like, here's snacks and drinks in case you guys have a long flight. And why is that <laughs> literally my mother? Mm-hmm. She has this thing, like, she has to feed people. Like, I have Cindy over at my house, and she texted me and was like, hey, you need to feed that child. I mean, to be fair, we didn't eat lunch, so. Well, we kind of ate breakfast and lunch at the same time and then and then we kind of had lunch but still my mom is just like and if someone comes and doesn't eat she's like panicking mm-hmm. and like calls their parents she's like um so they and like not in a nosy yeah. or, or a mean way but like she's scared she's like so um your your cat your child says she's not hungry but like i want to feed her <laughs> so is there something that she really likes or I should i give her something should i we buy her little. something mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's a, it's a thing and i didn't even like realize it until recently <laughs> and my dad told me about it and I was like wow it all comes together <laughs> but anyway mm-hmm. literally like every time we have a long like drive a young she'll, she'll grandma yes yeah. yes she's going to be a great grandmother <laughs> um but literally the snacks and drinks thing anytime our family goes on a car ride that's over 30 minutes whenever we go to church she used to have like this giant snack bag just everything she'll just bring food with us mm. so that if any of the kids are hungry she doesn't have to feel bad that she's keeping us hungry <laughs> she'll immediately have just this whole thing of peanut butter crackers and goldfish oh and my all goodness sorts of anyway sorry go ahead um let me see my next one is whoa you guys are hardcore with your goodbyes oh then you're next oh uh my mom just told me this is keith talking my mom just told me see you son and my dad only asked if i checked how tight the pin was on my cloak so i wouldn't lose a family heirloom Grady frowned, and Adeline That's reached for so Keith's hands, sus. giving it a quick squeeze. A bit of pink <sighs> flushed across his cheeks. Then he cleared his throat and offered Sophie's arm. So, you ready? That's just like, mm-hmm. first of all, Keith, I'll adopt you. Yeah. <laughs> Second of all, um, like, like he says, I, I, I don't remember what book it was in. Oh, it's like I'm already part of the family. Mm-hmm. When he said that, I was like, oh, <laughs> you just really said that in front of me. And Grady, like, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then uh-huh. Sophie's like, I have no idea what he meant by that. <laughs> Sophie. Mm-hmm. You know exactly what he means by that. Yep. Um, I think we probably, or not, no, mine's right before yours. Mm-hmm. Just the, are we there yet? <laughs> Keith had like already shouted that question. Exactly, over the whipping wind at least 14 times. If you repeated a, a 15th, Sophie was going to shove him into the dark waves below. No, for the millionth <laughs> time. He went from 15 to a million right there. Just like Keith, are we there yet? No, Keith. <laughs> Clearly, we Stella. are not there yet. That's what she says. You'll know that we're there whenever we stop flying. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he shouted it over the wind. And and his other um. Are we there yet? His other things. He goes. I'm guessing a tickle war is out of the question because you're pretty vulnerable. Right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> she goes. Try it and see what happens. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it so much. Oh my goodness. Their dynamic is so funny. Um, and then uh, he's like, how about you, Glitter What? You as bored as me? What's she saying? Or what's she saying? That you're annoying and she wants to dump you in the ocean. And Sylvanie was like, Keith, 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 Keith. <laughs> you're annoying and she wants to dump you in the ocean. Well, I know that that's not true. Glitterbutt loves me. Don't you, Glitterbutt? <laughs> Sylvanie windied as he patted her side. Sophie rolled her eyes. Keith shifted it again. So, gotta say, you're not as comfortable <laughs> as I'd like you to be. We need to fatten you up next time if you're softer. <laughs> Oh it's, my goodness. Can you imagine like your mind is completely scattered and you're like like so scared. anxious. Yeah. Because yeah. this is about to happen and then you've got are we there yet? Oh, uh-huh. we need to fatten this horse up. Yeah. Uh, that's a great waves out there. Can I have a tickle uh-huh. one? <laughs> <laughs> like bringing a toddler. Honestly. And my then, mm-hmm, my note here just says Sophie's deadpan. <laughs> She's just like her TI is like hello. Mm-hmm. <laughs> try it and see what happens <laughs> you do realize that makes me want to do it more right i'm serious keith <laughs> don't you dare and then um it says what is it it's a little different for me keith there's kind of a lot writing on this like your health and future and alden's health and stuff <laughs> which i thought you cared about alden at least oh he was quiet for a few Aww. seconds and sophie thought he was going to ignore her but then he leaned closer close enough that she could feel his breath on her cheek as he said i know i crack a lot of jokes sophie but it's just because it's easier, you know? It's how I deal. But it doesn't mean I don't care. I do a lot. She was suddenly very aware of how close he was and the way his arms were around her. She felt her cheeks flamed and hoped he couldn't feel a change in her mood. Are you scared? He asked quietly. She shrugged, not trusting her voice. Oh, is that the input thing? Where they don't, where they feel a mood change and don't know what it is? Mm-hmm. Possibly. Okay. Continue. You don't have to be. I meant when I told Sandor. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. She wanted to tell him he didn't have that kind of power. Instead, she cleared her throat and said, Thank you. He leaned back, taking his warmth with him, but at least, at least she felt like she could uh, breathe again. This is just so cute. <sighs> I can't. I love them so oh much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yep. And then also, just, um, she wanted to tell him he didn't have that kind of power. But He's then like, I'll like, protect you. And she's like, you can't. <laughs> but, but like in a sweet nice. way yeah like and then he just this is not spoilery like but like a hint or... but then he just tries to protect her for the rest of the series mm-hmm. basically Aww. until he learns yeah oh no. um whenever they got off sylvan is my next note do you have one before that um just 496 Apparently, Keith said something, and I just wrote down, oh Keith, I goodness. love you. Uh, this is it. Uh, s- okay, the legs are not happy. Keith complained as he took a few wobbly steps. Yep. Remind me never to take up horseback riding. <laughs> Sophie's legs were throbbing, too, but she was too distracted. So I'm guessing we have to go into the star- scary black cavern of doom, Keith asked, sighing when Sophie nodded. Yeah, I was afraid of that. I love that neither of us thought to bring a light, either. I love that he says I love that. <laughs> okay, mine's 501. Um, I said... I gotta find what this was, but I said, that's such a dumb question, Sophie, but I don't blame her. And I'm still confused about that note. What did she ask? Oh, the dumb question. Did the black swan murder Jolie? And I was like, that's such a dumb question. Mm -hmm. I understand, because that's what you're focused on. But, like, don't focus on it. Yeah, but don't. Of all the questions she could have asked him. I have some things that I think are before that. Um, So, he says, like, we knew when we started Project Moonlark that we could probably endure some casualties, especially their keepers, so we gave you the ability to heal broken minds. That way you could recover anyone who was lost. And I think mm-hmm. that was the first time where I was like, <laughs> what if her mind broke? Um, what if Sophie's? Mm-hmm. Hmm. But we've brought that up like four <laughs> times. We don't need to discuss what it again. What if her mind broke? Um, oh and gosh. then uh, she said, everyone told me that healing minds is impossible, as are most of the things I'm, I've enabled you to do, Sophie. I've done extensive research, and I discovered a safe place behind the mind. Or, sorry, inside the mind. <gasps> no, inside I the want mind. Sophie's mind to break. A nook where things <gasps> can be hidden. There would be no way to heal her. The series would be over. Um, what if she came back because of love? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Anyway, I discovered a safe place inside the mine, a nook where things can be hidden. It could work. Sorry, I'm Train like really hyper all of a sudden. <laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> I'm just reading. <laughs> anyway, they trained their keepers to hide part of their consciousness mm-hmm. so they didn't fully shatter. Yeah. And um, I'm just like, 
the, the, they train all of their members in that because o- their keepers don't have to be the only ones that could have their minds chatter. Anyone who volunteers for the Black Swan could have their minds chatter. I wonder if it's hard. Because of, you mean to train that? Yeah. Probably. But I think anyone could at least try. It's yeah. Pr- worth, it's a pro- precaution well, worth taking. Also, could it be only telepaths? Possibly. Mm-hmm. That's what I'd guess. Maybe. Oh, true. Because they're very, yeah. they know how to move their minds, really. They're the only ones who really have mm-hmm. to do that. Like, four colds here again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to save this one for spoilers. The spoiler um, episode. Uh, he says that she's 100% elf, and that's uh, yeah. evidence that her parents aren't human. Yeah, that's just, I said talk <laughs> about my human theory. I had a she's theory, so I've dramatic, mentioned it a sorry. bunch, where at one point I was like, is there any reason why her parents couldn't be, one parent couldn't be human? And then someone found this and totally it disproved it. Was it you? It was It was JC. <laughs> But, um... You were texting me, and I was like, hold on, I feel like he said something in exile, and then I yeah. sent you a picture, you were like, oh, I don't know, I But at this point, Tyrgen once. makes so much sense, I just mm-hmm. wish he was half-human, because it would be cool. <gasps> I, I like Tyrgen. really cool, but, yeah. All these things that I found of Tyrgen, now I want it to be him, because I didn't mm-hmm. realize how sweet he was, but yeah, he's so too. sweet! Um, and then right afterwards, it says, Sophie sank back down. It's whenever, whenever he's like, I modeled some of her DNA modifications off of alicorns. She's so dramatic. Mm -hmm. Sophie sank back down, too overwhelmed to even begin to process that, especially when he added, I've often wondered if that's how you ended up with brown eyes, though. Sophie buried her head in her hands. (laughs) How is she ever going to look in the mirror and see anything but a horse face now? Don't be so dramatic, Mr. Forkle grumbled. This is not oh, the tragedy you, you're making yeah. it out to be. <laughs> really? So you wouldn't care if someone played Dr. Frankenstein with your jeans? Are you any different right now than you were five minutes ago before you knew? I don't know. It feels like it. Well, you're not. I love I just it. Love that deadpan. Mm-hmm. Um, and then but he sat down next to her. Don't be so dramatic, Sophie. <laughs> Mr. Forkle sat down next to Sophie and <laughs> said his bulky body sank into the cushions, making her lean toward him more than she wanted. <laughs> That's so why it's awkward. So awkward. <laughs> It's like he's because because she's so mad at him, and then he sits down, and it's just like she slides toward him. <laughs> and then he puts it off. <laughs> no, I made that up. That's not in the book. That was a joke. <laughs> um, my next one isn't until after um, after she finishes the whole thing. So mm-hmm. do you have any before that? Um, yes, I do, actually. So 510, this is a out-of-context spoiler, so it won't make any sense to anyone else, but... I said Sophie originally fosters it because of the, um, she pulled back the crystal stopper and poured the salty metallic liquid down her throat. She's, she's like deciding then she takes it. I'm like, mm-hmm. fostered it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anything else? Um, 413, yeah, it's after, so go ahead. Okay, so right after she gets out, it's so sweet. So 1,116 other people have highlighted this. I made the 1,117. Uh... It says, she got back out, Keith was like, hey, are you okay? She didn't want to know any more horrible things about her past or who she was. It just kept getting worse and worse. One sob slipped through her lips, and once the floodgates were open, there was no stopping it. She waited for Keith to tease her, but he just scooted closer, lifting her head so it rested on his knee instead of the rocky ground. Wait, I can't find it. Which one? Where is it? Where is it? It's so cute. Where is it? Oh, yes, this. Sorry. Oh, they're so sweet. I- <laughs> And then my next one is just... Well, I have one before oh, that. go ahead. Sorry. So 513, I just put, oh, this is why he's so protective. Because um, I let you out of my sight for a few minutes, and you go and almost die again, Keith said. His words like a hammer pounding on her brain. Think about how many times this happens. <laughs> and he's just like, ah, I lost her again. Um, mm-hmm. And then, hey, easy. I'm not joking about the almost dying thing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, good, then maybe you can translate for me because... He kind of lost me at she almost died. Yep. It's just... (laughs) My next one is, like, right near that, and he's like... uh, She shook her head and slowly sat out. The pain of the simple movement knocked her breath away as she clutched her chest. Whoa, that is intense, Keith said, his voice strained. You can feel my pain? I'm sorry, I didn't... (gasps) It's fine. He stopped her from scooting away. I only feel a tiny glimmer. Nothing on what you're feeling, which must be unbearable. Seriously, how are you dealing with that? I don't have a choice. It's just like, oh, he's literally feeling her pain, and he's just downplaying And then it. this part, too, I don't know if you read this. I don't think you did. I think you stopped right before it, but the, sorry, she mumbled when the crying fit finally passed. For what? 
I should be braver than this. Um, I don't know if you realize this, but you're the bravest person I know, mm. by far. Freak out all you want. If anyone deserves to, it's you. Um, <laughs> my next one is for I like strive to be like Keith. Later. I know. My my next note isn't for a while. It's like really it's the council, whenever the council starts talking. Okay. Um it's the thing I mentioned about Kenrick earlier, mm-hmm. but I think you may have a note before it got yep. if you do. So five nineteen. So this is um right after they get back and she says that she asked them about Jolie and it says Grady and she so she tells him that um it's not basically it's not Grady's fault that Jolie died, like he had thought. Mm-hmm. And it's Grady wobbled and leaned back to bury his face in his hands. When he looked up, tears had pooled in his eyes, and his arms were shaking. So it wasn't my fault, he whispered. The question made Sophie's heart swell. Now he could let go of his anger and his guilt, all the burdens he'd been carrying and battling for so long. Now he could just be Grady again. Okay, I take back what I said about that being a stupid question. Yeah. I take it back. Sorry. (laughs) And that's really pretty writing, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Is yours? What's your next note? Um, no one's there yet, so it's before yours. Five twenty-eight. Okay. Let me find exactly where it is. My note says, "Oh yeah," <laughs> where she calls. Basically, she calls Sylvania a flight happy alicorn. It's like a flight <laughs> happy. <laughs> it's like trick or happy, but flight mm-hmm. happy. Nice. Yep. Ooh, okay. Um. So this is a little bit further forward after. Um after they get there Mm -hmm. but like Bront rolls his eyes what time can miss foster finally take her medicines and elwyn's like not until after sundown tomorrow then we'll be back at sunset Bront raised his pathfinder like the matter had been decided (laughs) wait sophie called turning to counselor emory i need a few more hours what for Bront demanded i need to go to everglin she couldn't risk that they might haul her way to exile without giving her a chance to fix alden because they're they're saying they're going to punish her for like going the black swan Mm -hmm. um she had no idea if there were any part of him that she could rescue, but there was no way she wasn't going to try. You really believe you can heal his mind? Kenrick asked quietly. See, that's that's the thing. Is like Kenrick was like, you really think that there's like hope? Mm-hmm. Oh. <sighs> According to the Black Sun, I was designed that way. You have like a feather on your eyebrow. My eyebrow. <laughs> this yes, one right here. What Did is I that? Get it off? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's like a piece of fuzz, but I have a bird and it looks like my bird's feather. Anyway. Um. <laughs> Um, according to the Black Swan, I was designed that way. Incredible, Counselor Tarek breathed. More like incredibly complicated, Brunt barked, and Sophie wished she had something to throw at him. Mm-hmm. Leave it to him to find a problem with everything. What do you mean, Brunt? Kenrick asked. I mean that we've spent so long operating under the knowledge that we can't fi- fix broken minds, and we've never had to consider whether we should. He would leave Alden trapped in madness? No, Bront admitted quietly. His recovery would be a tremendous gain. See, Kenrick is, like, very defensive of Alden there. Mm -hmm. Um, But where do we go from here? How do we decide who to heal and who not to heal? How about the ones who are innocent, like Prentice? Was Prentice innocent? Bront counted. Regardless of whether he was working for good or ill, he was still violating our fundamental laws. Is that worthy of redemption? Yes, Sophie answered, expecting the others to echo her. But the counselor stayed silent. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, laughing at stuff I know from the future of the series. Mm-hmm. Okay, what about something like someone like Brant? Sophie tried. Grady and Adeline gasped like they hadn't considered the idea. Um, fast forwarding to Brant saying like, "Well, we have to vote, and it should be a unanimous vote." Unanimous? Tarek asked. You realize how rarely we come to those. <laughs> my my theory is about ninety eight percent of the time, Brant just votes against them because he's like. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> like yeah. he, he doesn't have a real reason. He just doesn't so, want to make a rule. So my note right here says um, f- on 533, he's not wrong. And then 535, Bront actually makes a lot of sense in a way. He's being grumpy. But 533 where he says, um, where is it? Oh, so they're talking about how the black swan and, well, can't say that. Um, they're talking about how the black swan could have followed them back and um Grady says do you think they followed you on what Sophie asked we flew and there were other ways you could have gotten there Bront interrupted safer ways you could have taken instead of endangering the alicorn and likely crippling it he's not wrong yeah he's not wrong there and then um I do like his point where he says only that if this ability exists, it will need to be regulated and sanctioned, just like the breaks themselves. Careful thought and consideration will get, need to be given before each time it is used, and a unanimous vote should be required. Mm-hmm. 
anyway, I mean, he has a point. <laughs> that doesn't mean I like it, but yeah. Mm-hmm. He's he's so grumpy in these first two books. It just makes you want to disagree yeah. with everything he says. True. Mm-hmm. Um, My next note is a little bit later when she's talking to Fitz. I don't know if you have any before that. Um, let me see. 540. Um, yep, it's ra- right around there, so go ahead. Um, basically, if Sophie's like, you weren't that mean. And he's like, yeah, I was. And I'm like, yeah, you were. <laughs> then he says he it says he walked a few steps away, kicking the grass. I was just so angry. All I could do is scream and break things. Half my stuff is trash now. He turned back to her, but he kept his eyes down. And I'm like, okay, uh, like, Fitzy, you really might want to see, like, a counselor there. That sounds, mm-hmm. like a, that sounds like a legit problem. That, you, breaking things? Like, taking your anger out on stuff like that sounds like it's a, it's begun to be a bit of a problem. Yep. My note here is just where she says, you weren't that big of a jerk, and I just put, Fitz, you are a jerk. <laughs> and then, In this book, definitely. Mm-hmm. I get that he's nice later, and that's fine. And um, I did see a, a reviewer on Apple Podcasts that said, you're a Fitz fan, and hi, thank you for, for not getting tired of us. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he has anger problems. He really does. I'm sorry. Yeah, which I could disagree be if you say he doesn't. If he Yeah, I mean, totally if he works through them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that he needs to not ignore them. Yeah. And, and make then, excuses for them. Yep, exactly. 540, um, before, right before that, it's where, um, not that she expected Fitz to be having any more secret conversations with her. They barely had any secret conversations. They had, like, two. Mm-hmm. Anyway. And, okay, just for the sake of the Fitz fans here, I will at least read part of his apology because Mm -hmm. he does make it sound genuine. Um, He's like, I want you to know that before... Like, I am sorry for everything before you try to fix my dad because if it works, I don't want you to think that's the only reason I'm saying it. His words felt warmer than the sunshine peeking through the branches. It's okay, Fitz. I'm not mad at you. I don't think I ever was. Oh, that's a cat door slam. Your crush. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's, like, a thing. Basically, it's really hard to be really angry at a person whenever you like them. And he's like, why not? Slash love them. Like if it's your sibling. Anyway, go ahead. And Sophie's like, you thought you lost your dad. You had a right to freak out. But you really don't blame me anymore? Fitz stepped closer. I never really did. I was just, I don't know. I was being a hard family word. I was being ooped. I'm allowed to say it when I read. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, Sophie, wait a second. Boy, is that an understatement, Alvar said, making them both jump as he appeared out of thin air. And I gotta say, Sophie, I think you're letting him off too easy. At least they could buy you a present or something. <laughs> Sophie laughed as Fitz glared at his brother. Maybe next time. There won't, or no, Sophie said maybe next time. Maybe next time. There won't be a next time, Fitz said. No. And the look at his eyes made Sophie's heart flutter. She'd almost forgotten what that felt <sighs> like. <laughs> Moving on. We're just not going to um, comment because this is the spoiler free. The irony. Well, it's just that um, there won't be a next time, Fitz said. And the look in his eyes made Sophie's heart flutter. She'd almost forgot what that felt like. Yeah, well, let's hope not. Oh, said. <laughs> Sorry, this is just ironic. Um, yes. My next note isn't until um, the the Kenrick stuff for no one else did thing. So you could go ahead because you probably have one before that. So 546, I just said the guilt theme is so interesting. I don't know why <laughs> it's when she's healing Alvin. Believe me, I hope much just, to say on that theme whenever we get to the yeah, spoiler episode. It's really interesting. Sorry, I almost fell over. You're good. Um, <laughs> 565. Go ahead. Oh, all right, is that after me? Yeah, I'm way after, I think. Um, they're talking about, basically, Bronta saying, we're gonna exile Grady. And basically, everyone else is like, no, no, no. He's like, no, we are gonna exile Grady because that's the right thing to do. We have to show that he violated a law and he will be punished for it. Kenrick stepped forward when no one else did. I will not concede to a tribunal, Bron. No matter how you try to twist it, there's nothing about what happened that would merit us locking Grady away in exile like a murderer. He turned to the other counselors. That's not justice. That makes us just as cruel and reckless as the rebels we're trying to prevent. And if that's the kind of action we would consider to try to prove our worthiness, then we deserve every bit of criticism we're getting. A stunned silence followed until Orly moved beside him. I agree. Mm-hmm. And then everyone else agrees after that. And I was just like... What is Bront's problem? It's pretty writing. I love What it. is your problem, Bront? I love Kenrick. Yeah. <laughs> we have completely different chains of thought. I'm yes. Like Kenrick, and you're like, Bront! Honestly... I agreed with you, and then you just betrayed me with that. <laughs> That's true. Um, and then it's, it's just a short thing here, and Sophie's like, yeah, I have, an, I, I have this idea for Sylvanie. And Kendrick's just like, mm-hmm, deal. <laughs> and then Tarek's like, 
yeah, deal. <laughs> and everyone else is like, fine. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was just funny that Kendrick was like, yeah, let's go with Sophie's idea. Yep. Um, he's so nice. Oh. Um, anyway, uh, Tarek's talking to Sophie, like, during the celebration later. I don't know if mm-hmm. that's your note. Mine's right after that, I believe. So he's, like, talking to Sophie, and it's like, there you are, Miss Foster, Bronn said, stepping from the shadows. He eyed Counselor Tarek as he said, am I interrupting someone? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, uh, <laughs> hmm. uh, hmm. Yes, Sophie and I were having a pleasant conversation, so I'm sure this is your cue to ruin it. Bronn scowled <laughs> and folded his arms. Actually, I do need to have a word with Miss Foster. Alone. Mm-hmm. Sophie sighed. Of course he did. Counselor Tarek gave her an apologetic smile as he left her <laughs> with her pointy-eared nemesis. Yep. Um, mine, but Sophie held Bron's icy glare. Yep. Mine after that is just where it says, you really can't feel that? He asked after a minute. Feel what? Or, feel what? Why did I say that like a statement? <laughs> feel what? Apparently your mind is impenetrable to inflicting now. You tried to inflict on me? Bruh. I was like, <laughs> really? He's just casually inflicting on her right. in the middle of the school, just like, trying like, you know, let's just make her feel pain real quick. <sighs> Yep. This is, anyway. Mm-hmm. And then it says, uh, whenever he's like, I, I will not be holding back at your next inflicting session. She flashed her most confident smile, which felt more like a smirk as she told him, bring it on. That sounds like so much like Keith. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I think, oh, I think, okay, you have the next one probably, the ending. Yeah, so 567, right at the end, where it's, well, wait, what are you doing? I'm, this is. <laughs> oh, okay. You can read the ending because that's right after okay. it. Um, so 567, the page before, I just have Sophie ignoring Keith's flirting because it's, um, <laughs> if you mean that you're secretly in love with me, Keith said, plopping down beside her, then yeah, everyone is well aware. And if you mean the stuff about your DNA, well, we heard Grady explaining that to Alden. Oh, she didn't have much more to say than that. Except, well, now you know how weird I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always known that, Dex said sitting on her other side. But remember, I like weird. Me too, Bianca chimed in. Me three, Fitz added, smiling so wide that when, when she met his eyes, her heart fluttered. We could, all, we could all use a little more weird in our lives. Sophie wasn't so sure she agreed. I'm so sorry if you're listening and you have an English accent. Like, don't yeah, tell me. Yeah, for real. Especially I, my failed attempts earlier. Also, I love your accent. Um, <laughs> Sophie wasn't sure she agreed. With how crazy everything had been and all the things she still had to figure out, she wouldn't have minded if life got a little more normal for a while. But maybe weird was okay, too, especially if her friends were willing to accept it. Mm. Whoa, are you crying? He fast. He's like, tears, what do I do? <laughs> I know, I guess she just cried, like, with him, like, mm-hmm. right after. Okay, anyway. She blushed as she tried to smear away her tears. You're supposed to cry when bad things happen, Foster, not good Aww. things. I know, I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. I do, Keith said, taking her hand as Dex grabbed the other and Fitz and Bianca each squeezed her shoulders. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Sophie smiled as she glanced up at the flickering lights in the sky, feeling nothing but calm and happiness as they flashed in her eyes. I hate to say this, Keith, but I think you might be right. Aww. Sydney's literally, like, covering her face. She <laughs> <laughs> So cute and wholesome. I love Keith Foster so much. I love, I love this book. <laughs> How do you not ship Key Foster? <laughs> How? Sydney is very confused here. How? <laughs> We're going to have to have it's a amazing. talk with your brother. <laughs> he's dopey, though. That one, it's because he's basically is Dex. I know, but still, they're so cute. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, that is that is our whole um, yeah. Exile spoiler-free episode. Wow. So. The next one that will come out will probably be a fun episode, mm-hmm. and then after that, we'll I don't have... think we have enough energy to film the spoiler. <laughs> no, not film. Record the spoiler yeah. one right now. We'll do the spoilery one after, so that will be Hopefully. the episode after the next mm-hmm. one. But yeah, thank you guys for listening yeah, to this you. super long episode. And I noticed oh, so many people listened to the last one. I was really excited. Yeah, we were so super very surprised. surprised. So since thank it was you. so long, like the <laughs> amount of you guys who actually stayed through that whole episode was. Really crazy. Impressive. Thank you for enduring our um our silliness. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for listening to the Forbidden Cities podcast. Leave us a review and tell a friend about the podcast if you liked us. Email us with comments and episode suggestions at the Forbidden Cities Podcast at gmail.com and to follow us on Instagram, just search at Forbidden Cities Podcast. <laughs>